Please call the roll. <clears throat> Menez. Present. Morales. 
Cohen? Carrasco? Here. Davis? Esparza? Here. Arenas? Foley? Here. Mahan? Here. Jones? Jones? Licardo? Here. There's Jones. His name just popped on the screen. <clears throat> you have a quorum. Great, thank you. Um, thanks everyone for taking the time this Monday morning to resume our prioritization process. Uh, before we turn it over, um, I do want to point out a memorandum that probably I didn't explain very well um, the intent behind this. And this was regarding the removal of two items from the prioritization list that are explicitly described in the budget message that the council will be considering tomorrow. And the rationale for removing those from prioritization is that the council would have uh, a full opportunity to uh, support or not those initiatives and the funding that's required to enable the resources to support those initiatives. And so that was my rationale for suggesting that they be removed from prioritization. Um, just want to explain that. And that's a memorandum dated March 11th. Uh, we'll move on now to Dave. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Council. Appreciate the opportunity today. Um, and appreciate your time. Um, I think we talked to through before, recognizing this is not easy. Um, and um, appreciate um, the input that we've received so far. Uh, obviously, we want to do our best to make the process understandable, um, and we're trying to do that and, and make it meaningful as well. Because uh, ultimately, I think it will be very meaningful for us to be able to um, prioritize our, our work going forward. Um, you know, the way we have set this up is is that the, the this process will will inform the budget process in terms of our priorities. Ultimately, whatever gets approved in the budget, we will have to make adjustments to the roadmap to, to align um, with, with the budget. And, and that's the way we have set this up from the very beginning, is to achieve that alignment between kind of our work plan and the budget. Um, and, and ultimately, I think what we're striving for here is a set of priorities that we all believe in, and then we can drive, obviously, accountability throughout the, the organization in terms of meeting these objectives. So. Uh, so once again, thanks for the time, and I'm going to turn it over to Kip and let Kip walk us through today. Thank you, Dave. Good morning, Kip Harkness, Deputy City Manager. Appreciate everybody being here uh, extra bright and early on the time change morning. I'm just going to take a couple of slides to, to kind of bring us up to speed, especially for those who are uh, watching uh, from home, as it were, uh, and then we'll dive right in. Uh, I'm um, uh, going to defer public comment until we get through a little bit of the presentation so that it's um, closer to the conversation around the prioritization itself so that the public comment can, can best inform that prioritization. So just a, a couple of things briefly then. Um, uh, previously, on February 25th, 2021, you, uh, the Mayor and Council, engaged in what was part one of creating the next year's city roadmap. In our last session, we developed an understanding of the city roadmap as a prioritization framework, as Dave described, for the change initiatives in the city. And the Council adopted that roadmap with one modification and deferred adding additional items to that roadmap until today. So today, we'll be collaborating on part two adding in new policy items to the roadmap. So um, as, uh, as we embark on adding new policies in the roadmap, it's important to remember the year that we all went through was like no other, characterized by the intersection and interaction of multiple disasters, any one of which would have been a challenge. As we all know, 2020 saw us responding to a deadly pandemic, an e economic crisis, structural racism, civil unrest, power shutoffs, flood, threats, and widespread wildfires and smoke. So if the last year or so has been our year of COVID response, then this next year is the beginning of our year of recovery, or more realistically, years of recovery. So today's part two is focused on prioritizing the vital few initiatives that must happen in the next year to move the city of San Jose toward our vision of long-term recovery. 
So after engaging in a rich debate prioritiz about prioritization and trade-offs and going into depth on almost a dozen different items, the discussion helped us clarify the reasoning behind the roadmap items and ultimately you, the council, decided to deprioritize increase in um, the airport passenger level as a citywide priority for the upcoming fiscal year, although it will remain a departmental priority for the airport. The remaining initiatives will be part of next year's roadmap and will be integrated, as Dave mentioned, into the budget process. So at this point, with the initiative deprioritized, this is a view of next year's roadmap following round one. What this also means is there addition, there's a little bit of additional capacity. So we believe there's capacity to add uh, two new policy priorities to the city roadmap. And so round two today of the special meeting will allow us to understand from your perspective, what those two new priorities will be. So this is the menu, if you will, of options that you, is laid out for you to select from for round two. You will take a look at this, these backlog of possible policies and make a collective recommendation on what items should be pulled out of the backlog and placed onto next year's roadmap as citywide priorities. Items that are not selected, uh, but are receive um, points from you all, will be prioritized for future iterations of the roadmap and we'll also be looking at them to see if we can add them in this year if they directly align with items already on the roadmap. One particular item of note is that in between last session and this session, staff evaluated item CP7, the review of cannabis land use and regulatory provisions, and determined that that item will be sufficiently completed by the end of the fiscal year and that implementation can and will continue in the new fiscal year as a departmental priority and therefore does not be, need to be considered in today's session. So hey, sorry about uh, that. I was, uh, had a bio break and then uh, Rob, you're on my, you're on live. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I thought that was a cheer for cannabis. Um, so the um, <laughs> this will continue as a departmental priority and therefore does not need to be considered in today's session. So bottom line, that work will get done, but does not need to be on the city road, citywide roadmap in order to be continued. So that was a, a bit of a shift and a clarification from the last time that we spoke to you. Uh, another change you see, or will see, is that as part of the motion that was adopted in the last meeting, staff was directed to evaluate the set of priorities for any initiatives that could be combined based on similarities. Staff has identified the following two pairs, which we feel are, are combined and are essentially similar or allied pieces of work. NP16, the San Jose Surveillance Ordinance, and EP2, Digital Privacy Policy Implementation. So what that means is that a vote for either one of those is considered a vote for both. We'll be combining those together and considering them as a single policy recommendation, realizing that we'll need to clarify with council at a later date exactly what that policy direction is, but we'd put that initial piece of work together as one item. The other one that we're recommending combining is NP6, which is Build Back Better Initiative, and NP8, convene a citywide COVID-19 recovery task force. We felt that those two pieces were very tightly allied and essentially uh, pointed in, in the same direction. So again, a vote for either would be, a, uh, one would be a vote for both. So as I mentioned, in addition to the top two policy items, one of the outcomes today will be a series of things that do not make it to the top two, but do receive points. Following this special meeting, the administration will also evaluate those items which we'll consider prioritized in the backlog for any direct clear ties to initiatives on the existing city roadmap. If there are direct connections to existing roadmap items, we will assess whether the scope of the backlog initiative can be incorporated into the work plan of that city roadmap initiative. If that seems likely, we'll bring forward a policy discussion with council to clarify direction and add it onto the roadmap for next fiscal year. So what that means is of the, in addition to the top two, if we believe that the remaining items that you are prioritizing can fit within the existing work streams, we'll bring those back and begin to incorporate those into the um, conversation. So this is the final uh, backlog slide, which uh, break, omits uh, the cannabis CP7 item because that's completing. Um, and then also brings together the two pairs that I mentioned, mentioned before. So with this, you have about, not about, you have 44 initiatives that are the focus of today's round two. I think this is probably a good time to pause before I go into 
well, let me actually do one more slide and then pause. Um, so the basic process, let me do a quick rundown of this and then I'll pause for questions and clarifications. Round two today is focused on the process of taking some of these backlog policies and adding them to the roadmap for development and implementation. As a reminder, the administration has estimated that it has initial capacity over the next year to work on two initiatives. To determine what those two will be, we will use the following five-step process. One, public comment to give the public an opportunity to express preferences. Two, council advocacy to give the mayor and city council members about five minutes or so each to voice their perspective on what policies should or should not be prioritized. An initial round of points investment that's using a survey link that has been already distributed to the mayor and council which they will submit uh, after public comment and council advocacy. We'll tally those and then we'll go through an initial review of the structured points of the points and then we'll reallocate points and the process of which is described in the memo and I'll describe in more detail after we hear from council and public. And then ultimately we'll have, as I mentioned, the final prioritization of top two initiatives to add to the roadmap, along with a list of other initi initiatives receiving points that will be moved to the top of the backlog for the administration to evaluate and potentially add to the roadmap as capacity becomes available, or again, if there's a direct fit with existing items. So at this point, I think that's a great place to pause. Um, and uh, Mayor, actually, I'll turn it back over to you. There are some hand raised that may be for questions or clarifications. This also is probably a good time if you would like to discuss your uh, memorandum before we go any farther with the process. Actually, Kim, I, Kip, I, I did just before you spoke. Yeah, um, I, I, I just, if you wanted to take action on it. Oh, okay. Oh, I got it. Yeah, good point. Um, so we can certainly uh, consider that as well. Uh, two members of the council appear to have <coughs> questions, so let's uh, see if we can sort out questions first. Councilmember Jimenez. Yeah, thank you, Kip. I just had a question related to, um, let's see, it's NP10, which is Encampment Management Strategy, and MP20, Unhoused Resident Safe Relocation Policy. Mm -hmm. Those seem somewhat similar to me, and, and I'm curious if uh, you all considered combining those, and if not, why didn't they match? It, it just seems... Yeah, we actually felt similarly, um, and then when we talked to our housing folks, they felt that they were distinct. I think uh, Jackie or Reagan is on the line, and perhaps we can help clarify on that, because we had a similar line of thinking that you did, Councilmember Jimenez, um, and, I, and so if we've got um, somebody yeah. from housing on the line, we'd appreciate that clarification. This is Jackie, and I'm sorry, what were the two that looked the same to you? It was uh, NP10, which is the encampment management strategy, and then it was... Uh, NP20, the unhoused resident safe relocation policy. So NP10 here and NP20, if you can see my, my deck. Yes, so um, NP10 is the SOAR program. And so that's the program where we're providing um, the toilets, hand washing stations, and trash pickup. And then NP20 has to do with how we are moving people around. And so it, it is not the same and it's handled by two different teams. Um, and, and, and so anyways, it's two very distinct work, uh, pieces of work. I think Lee might also have wanted to add in. I, uh, Lee, did you want to add in a perspective as well? Sure, thank you, Kip. Yeah, and I would agree with Jackie. When we read this, we really saw them as two distinct bodies of work, um, each an important strategy. Um, but even the teams and the folks that we have working on a lot of this are, are separated out at City Hall. So we saw these as two separate uh, separate work programs. Okay, all right. Well, well listen, as, as someone that, um, obviously there's some items that we're gonna be considering that we've put forward. And, and so I know sometimes maybe the, the, uh, the title we've given some of our proposals uh, don't, uh, sort of adequately capture what, what our intent was. So to the extent uh, some of the folks that submitted these are, are interested in chiming in as to their thoughts, maybe, you know, I'd like to hear that. But, but the other thing I, I guess I, I wonder, Jackie, is I, I, don't, I don't think it's any, any secret that we're considering moving uh, the abatements out of your department, right? I mean, that's public knowledge that that may, that's going to be considered at some point. Is it? Um, yes, there is a budget proposal right. to have the abatements in the um, PRNS. 
Yeah. And which so, would be work uh, working in collaboration with Beautify. Okay. And, and I guess the reason I asked that is I'm curious if it's worth, I'm not sure if we have anyone from Parks or if John's on, you know, I know obviously that's a fairly new sort of model we're going to. We do. We have Neil, Neil Rufino is here with his hand raised. So, so, so if Neil has any thoughts on it, because they're going to be the ones doing the work, it seems to a certain extent. And so if he has anything to share, great. If not, that's okay. Neil, okay. all you. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Council Member. Um, yeah, and just in terms of the split of those two, I think, uh, like Jackie and Lee said, they are separate. And part of the reason why it's separate is uh, what you just alluded to is that the abatement services uh, are potentially moving to park and rec. Um, so that we would be kind of working very closely with housing, but we would have a very uh, specific uh, role in both uh, abatement strategies as well as continuing of the Beautify SJ um, trash management uh services so just in that mode we are looking at that as a bit separate but um even as we've done throughout this whole year working hand in hand with housing uh on all this efforts around the homeless residents okay cool uh so great thank you uh on a, on a slightly different note um i appreciated the fact that uh, the two items were combined and that's the one of the items was mine it was the the convena citywide uh covid19 recovery task force which i think might have been d3 uh, Council Member Perales, and then the Build Back Better initiative. Uh, so I appreciated that. I think that's very natural uh, combination, as you suggested, Kip. What I'm wondering, though, is if if we think, or if any thought was given as to whether the I think the Alf I'm trying to remember what the name sort of morphed into, but the Alfresco Forever type of program that seems to fall under that. And I think that's I'm looking for the number, but I think that's, yeah, NP3. It's right here. I think that's mm -hmm. solo still, right? Yeah, and, and, and council member, this is, this is where it's more of a, an art than a science. Um, I think you could make a, 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 just to be candid, I think you could make an argument that it falls under part of what we didn't, part of what, one of the things as a facilitator that you want to avoid doing is just super clustering, which is putting everything together because it's all related. And then you vote on one policy, which is 15. So, um, you know, we saw that as one of the potential items that would come back out of a build back better okay. initiative as it was described and the citywide COVID-19 recovery task force. Um, but we ended up leaving it out because it felt like a distinct piece on its own. Again, these are staff recommendations and if, if council views them differently, we're, we're, we're here to take council direction. Um, okay. So that was our initial cut was uh, the Alfresco forever, but it was certainly one of, of, of the things that we debated and, and perhaps went back and forth on as well. And I appreciate that. I understand the rationale. I'll, I'll leave it to, to council member Davis if she's interested in trying to combine things. But uh, anyway, those were my thoughts. Thank you so much for the clarity and this is much uh, cleaner, it seems to me, than the first time around. So I, I appreciate the work and, and the clarity. Thank you. Thank you. I think we also have a, a question from Council Member Cohen. Is it? Yeah, okay. Uh, was, um, my question was also gonna be about NP10 and NP20. I, I just wanted to say one more thing about that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like the answer to why, why those are listed remain distinct is that there are ongoing thing, all ongoing programs already underway that cover each of these areas separately. But if we're talking about this from a strategic standpoint of how to, um, you know, potentially build new policy or evaluate what's happening in our camps, it seems to me that that ten and twenty aren't necessarily that different from that regard. I mean, we have ongoing beautify SJ operations and and um, and camp and abatement pile things that might happen. And it seems to me those might have, those will probably happen whether or not we approve NP10 or NP20 on this um, strategic plan today. But there are other things we can discuss as far as the idea of having sanctioned in camp, a sanctioned in camp policy or larger issues of how we um, deal with the, with the variety of camps across the city that aren't necessarily figured out yet. And that's why they're on this potential roadmap. And that's why I, I'm not, I wouldn't be sure myself how to say, okay, do I vote for NP10 or do I vote for NP20 if I'm interested in having a more strategic discussion about dealing with encampments. Yeah. So my preference would be to combine them so we can sort of put votes in that area and then, and then that would be um, allowing the city to then see where it goes as far as uh, what new policies might come out of that or what new operations might come out of that. 
Well, Councilmember Cohen, Councilmember Menez, if I could argue against myself based on, on what you just said, then I think, you know, what you're suggesting is that perhaps this, the separation of NP10 and NP20 is makes sense from an internal uh, kind of how we administer standpoint, but from an external how things affect the community, they are both part and parcel of the same thing. Um, and so that having them connected, what, regardless of who is doing which, having them connected and in tight coordination is, is essential to achieving the outcome that you want in the community. And therefore, as we think about it from a policy standpoint, they should be connected in the same conversation, regardless of, of if you know, one is done by a completely different unit and the other is done by a different unit, that the, the combination of the two is important from a policy and an outcome for the community perspective, if I'm, if I'm getting the argument yeah. that you and, and the council member Jimenez are advancing. But I, I don't know exactly so what's going on. Yeah, go ahead. So this is Jack. I just wanted to jump in now that I've had more coffee and I'm listening to you all talk about it more. So I guess the distinction I would make on the policy level is that really NP10 is more of how do you support an encampment that is there, right? And so um, it would fall into the whole category if you were broadening out to sanction encampments. It's really about, we have encampments everywhere in the city. If they're going to continue to exist, how do we uh, more effectively support them in whatever way? So the SOAR program is the one of the ways that we're doing that. I really see NP20 as it's really an abatement program. And how do we effectively resource that abatement program? Be because I think the response that we get is it's either keep or move. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, I, I agree there is the bigger policy issue of, of the, you know, there's only so, you know, there's 6,000 people living outside. We are never going to have enough spaces to do sanctioned encampments to take care of 6,000 people. So we still have to fix the abatement program to make it, to make the priorities clear on what we're going to remove um, and how to ensure that it's working as effectively as possible. So I see as one is we're staying, one's not, you know, one's we're removing. So, um... Let's, uh, I think there are a couple more questions on this. Again, just sort of from a staff perspective, we, uh, I can see both sides of the, of the picture here. Um, and um, uh, Council Member Cohen, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I think I may have taken over your job. Um, so, so let me, if you want me to hand, hand it back to you, I'm happy to, but I can also keep continue facilitating the conversation. No, actually, you. I actually had a, uh, a group of firefighters arrive at my front door and I wasn't even <laughs> okay. on a false alarm. So I was quite happy to have you take over, Kim. <laughs> okay. Let me, just, let me just add one thing before I'll, I'll yield uh, my moment. Um, I, I, mean, I fully agree that those can be two separate actions, but I still see that, that, that they're somewhat related in the sense that we, may, we have to balance between how, how much we're um, how, how much uh, we are supporting the existing encampments versus how we are relocating people. And if we're gonna be relocating people, a strategy of what encampments are sanctioned, which ones aren't and where people will be relocated kind of is part of that. So when it comes to a strategic discussion for the city, to me, the overall, the overarching question of how do we um, support the city and the population of people who are unhoused is, is to me the big strategic question. That I think is important to, I mean, my perspective is something important to consider as one of our roadmap items. Um, and, you know, if you have these two separate, it, it, it may or may not rise to that level where we get the support for one or the other. So that's why I suggest that we combine them. And then from combining them, you, it, it, they become some, you know, kind of supported across multiple departments potentially. And then whatever comes out of that will be implemented in specific locations in the city. That's just my proposal. Yeah, I, thank you, Council Member. And I, 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 I um, just sort of from a roadmap standpoint, I, I think that uh, I'd love to hear from Council Member Perales, but I, I think we're open to combining those items as, as we've been listening to the uh, conversation and the argument. So, uh, Council Member Perales? Yeah, I'll jump back yeah. in. Thanks, Tim. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, is it okay to jump yeah, in? Yeah, please do. Thanks. Okay. Um, and this is on the, the alfresco forever being included in that, is that correct? 
Uh, we could discuss that as well. I, I think it was separate. Uh, Councilman Cohen, do you want to describe? Well, I think both Councilmember Jimenez and I mentioned NP10 and NP20, both related to unhoused residents. And yeah, th those are from D9 and D10, uh, not D3. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry. So that's really yeah. Good. So on that issue, why don't we <clears throat> why don't we hold that issue for a moment? Uh, Councilmember Perales, I think, was raising his hand about something else. Let's let's just go in order, and we'll come right back to that issue. Uh, and I suspect maybe you know, a vote. Uh, Councilmember Perales. Why don't you speak on the item you want to speak on? Okay, great, thank you. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, I know that earlier that was brought up that, that maybe uh, if I if that was something I was comfortable with, and I, I agree with Councilmember Jimenez. I may have comments on D10 and D9 being combined as well, but I didn't I didn't draft those, so I so I didn't I didn't know if that's what you were asking about, Kip. I'm happy to get clarification though, Kip, and then I can, um, and then I, I do have some of my own talking points, but. Okay. If, if, All right. Let's that... let's go. Uh, Councilmember Foley has her hand up. Uh, she okay. Is that sponsors the items. Councilmember Foley. Yeah. Great. Thank you. As the author of NP20, I think it's actually natural to combine NP20 and NP10. They are not dissimilar. In uh, uh, our proposal is that we look at relocating unhoused residents from environmentally sensitive areas and not abating them, but relocating them. So I just wanted to make that distinction. This isn't about abating unhoused, it's about relocating them away from our creek beds and environmentally sensitive areas into areas that uh, are, and of course this is investigating this, into areas that are public spaces. So. NP10 is the resources that would allow these encampments to be successful, the sanctioned encampments to be successful. So that's, I, I see them as naturally together. Uh, and I don't know if I can make a motion to combine them or, or how that, how you want to handle that, but that would be my prefer preference as the author of NP20 that they be combined with NP10. If, okay. if, the, if the author of NP10 agrees with that. Councilmember Foley, we'll come back to you on a motion in just a moment. I know I didn't want to take the floor completely from Councilmember Cohen. Uh, has started. So let me come back to you. We'll go to Councilmember Mahan, who is a sponsor of the other item. Uh, and then we may come back to you on a motion. Councilmember Mahan. That's great. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. And, and I'm okay with combining them. Just, just to be clear, I, I wrote a pretty lengthy memo on MP10 and clearly stated at the top two recommendations, which are services and setbacks. And so the fundamental idea that I'm proposing is setbacks from sensitive areas, just like council member Foley, with a more comprehensive plan for delivering services to encampments in the remaining areas that are not within those setbacks. So I think they're naturally, if anything, I think MP10 is probably more comprehensive in that way, but I think they fit together nicely. Okay. So coming back to you, Councilmember Cohen, did, did, that, did that respond to your questions? Yeah, yes, that, that, I think that that's, that's what I was suggesting and that I'm supportive of what both Councilmember Foley and Councilmember Mahan said. Okay, Councilmember Foley, did you want to make a motion on this particular item? Yes, if now's the time, I would move Please. that we combine NP10 and NP20. Okay. And I just ask if there are questions on that or comments on that specific issue, um, I'm happy to consider those now. I, I know folks are raising their hands on other items as well. Uh, so I see Councilmember Cohen, Perales, and Mayhan all with hands up. Did any of you want to speak on this item? No, I was just seconding Councilmember Foley's uh, motion. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, then let's vote on this consolidation. Point of clarification, can we yeah. restate what we're consolidating, please? Sure. Uh, NP10 and NP20, so perhaps, uh, Councilmember Foley, did you wanna read them off so we're, we're clear? What, NP10 is the encampment management strategy and NP20 is the unhoused resident safe relocation policy? Yes. Is that, is that okay. Is everyone clear about the proposed consolidation? Yes, I, I thought we also, so NP6 and NP8 are also um, 
So either a vote for either one is counts combined, correct? Uh, um, th those are already combined. Okay, yeah, all right. Those are already combined, yeah. Okay, good, so thank the, you, that's it. The motion is just on MP10 and 20. Uh, Councilor Peralta, did you wanna speak on this particular issue? Uh, I was just going to combine it into my comments on, on I'm supportive of it, so I'll, I'll, we can vote now. And okay, we'll come back to you on the other comments. Okay, great. Let's vote then on this proposed consolidation of MP10 and MP20. Menes? Yes. Perales? Aye. Cohen? Aye. Carrasco? Aye. Davis? Aye. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Pardo? Aye. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Perales? Oh, sorry, mute. Thank you. Um, so first brief comments on that. I, I completely support that. I'm glad that we got to that resolution. Um, I know we'll be talking about this on the 23rd based on a memo I'd written last month. And uh, really, I think, um, you know, it, it certainly should be both strategies. I think we, we need to be identifying locations where we can provide uh, services. Uh, and if it's not the locations where they're at right now, then we need to be looking at where we can relocate people to. And so I think that it's, it's both of these. Um, I don't think it should be either or. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Um, and I hope that those uh, combined as, an, as a priority uh, will get support. I know we're not, we're not lobbying at the moment. Um, so I had a couple questions. Um, Mayor, in your budget message, you mentioned about uh, the Alfresco uh, program and if we could if, utilize some of the federal stimulus funding for that. Uh, would it not also be wise, as you have mentioned, uh, for instance, taking the Resilience Corps uh, off within your memo, would, it, would we not be able to do the same thing with Alfresco, considering that you've included it in your message? I know we haven't voted on that yet, so it's yeah. a little presumptuous, that, but so, yeah. That could be the subject of a motion, yeah. I, I, I know that we'd have to work this out through motions anyway. So um, I agree there is a proposal in the budget to allocate resources to make that program uh, permanent. Yeah, and you know, uh, and I support that 100%. I'd like to not have to, you know, if, if we're gonna fund that through the budget and if it looks like that's something that, that, you know, is supported by the council, I'd love to take that off the list. Um, and uh, before I finish my comments, uh, I'll kick it over to Councilmember Davis because I see her raising her hand, and I'm assuming it was to, to discuss this as this was her proposal. And then if yeah. I can still have the floor, thanks. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Councilmember Prowess, uh, if that's okay with the mayor. <laughs> yeah, no, that's um, fine. I'm, I'm also fine with uh, going through the budget. The, the budget message has um, al fresco extending through through this fiscal year and then having the direction for staff to come back to us basically by the end of this this, this next fiscal year with options. So I'm fine with taking it out of this process since there's already a budget allocation for it um, in the budget. So Mayor, we need a motion to take that to take that off the table. Is that right? Yeah, and again, obviously this is all conditioned on council approval tomorrow. Uh, that's point is that the council will have an opportunity to consider and debate it. Yeah, so part of me um, would prefer if the NP6 and NP8 combination have, um, have interest in the economic recovery as well. Part of me would prefer to have it folded into there just to make sure that it goes through. Um, I'll, I'll second that if that's a motion. Yeah, that's my motion. I'd, I'd prefer to do that rather than take it completely off the table. I, I, I'm sorry. Can, can you clarify for me, Councilmember Davis? I'm not sure I understand what you're doing with the other two items. So the the two items, NP6 and NP8, that are about, about recovery and build back better that have been combined already, to combine the alfresco forever in there, as one of as one of the build back better options. Yeah, so merge all three of those priorities into a single yeah. a single. Okay. Approach. Yeah. So there's a grand merger here. Yeah. And can I add another point of clarification? Is NP six specifically mentions al fresco, so it's it is a natural fit. Right. 
Okay, uh, Council Member Perales. Yeah, no, I, I'm happy to vote on that as well. I I, that, I I think that I think that you know certainly it should still garner your uh, or our support from your budget message as well. That that's something that we can help fund through federal stimulus dollars. But I also agree. Not only did uh, Councilor Jimenez include it within his message of Build Back Better, um, it was it was repeatedly supported through the task force uh, that I was running last year. And so I'm, I think that it's, it's literally all across the board being included in all those. So I think, I think it makes sense to, to have it looped in. So I'm, I'm happy to, to vote on this. And if you don't mind, I just wanted to keep my hand up because there was other questions that I had, Mayor, but I'm happy to vote on this if we want to do that. Okay, so we are combining the, the motion is to combine D, um, D, I'm sorry, uh, uh, NP6, NP8. And NP3. And NP3. Okay, is everybody aware of the, are clear about the motion and the proposed consolidation? We will go to public comment. We'll just do it as after we've done all this consolidating and rearranging, and then we'll go to public comment about what, before we vote on actual moving, actually moving anything forward for those who are wondering. Okay, any questions about this proposed consolidation? Um, I, I do have one question to staff, which is, it seems as though there are different threads here going in different directions. Um, since I was part of convening um, a regional recovery task force, I know a little bit about the workload there, um, and that we had a lot of folks doing a lot of stuff, um, and that may or may not be. <laughs> the same kind of work we'd want to do in actually getting things done um, that may be identified in NP6. So I just want to get sort of staff's read on this. Yeah, and- Is this an actual fit or not? <laughs> well, we, we certainly think NP6 and NP8 fit together. We realize that they're, they're, they may be kind of overlapping uh, streams of work, but it feels okay. like thinking about what are all the things, I mean, at a top line, one of them is what are all the things that we have done that we want to keep, and how do we make sure that as we as we as we return to the new normal, which we want as a better normal, that that we we keep the energy and momentum that we've had in the recover in the response going into the recovery, and then the other wide is the other piece around the the task force in, in our mind is making sure that we're doing this with with partners um, at, at at high levels with community partners and 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 also with the community so. Part of what we would do with this, if this gets approved as a policy, is actually come back to council and say, okay, what does this exactly mean? What do you want us to go forward with? So the two of them together are a pretty big piece of work, but we consider them um, very much allied in terms of getting the feedback from task force and then figuring out internally what we think we want to continue doing. So it, both of them okay. together are a big chunk of work, but they, they seem very reasonably connected to the overall community and economic recovery and provide some governance framework for it, if you will, to, at the risk of being jargony. Okay, great. All right, any other comments then? There's a motion. Let's vote on the motion. Jimenez? Yes. Corrales? Aye. Cohen? Aye. Osco? Aye. Davis? Aye. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Aye. Okay, Councilman Perales? Yeah, thank you. Um, and I know staff's getting nervous over there because we're just trying to combine everything and throw it all together and get it all approved. So, um, <laughs> So I'll, I'll make them. I'll make them a little more nervous. I got a couple more um, <laughs> ideas. So, in regards to uh, there's two staffing analysis items, um, both from Councilmember Sparza, NP18 and NP14. I want to see how much of that work. And I don't. Is 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 Jennifer Shembri on? Or no? I'm not sure if Jennifer is on, but we can. Uh, I think also Jennifer McGuire is on as well. She was okay. Be, or Jennifer she McGuire in both of those. Sure. So uh, the question would be because it, it it seems to me like those are extremely important things that we we should be doing periodically, anyways, especially as we have staffing troubles. And I I know that especially now as you know we're we've had staff 
redeployed to all different areas. Um, you know, so w w this is a major issue. And so I'm curious how much of this is sort of could be on a work plan already, or is it maybe not in the context that Councilmember Sparza has presented? Um, I know that we obviously haven't had a chance to really dive too deep into all of these items. They were really almost right subject lines that we, we were presenting, right? The one or two sentence. And so um, curious on hearing both from council member Esparza and from uh, either Jennifer Shembury or Jennifer McGuire, if you can respond to that and see if these two um, are something that, that is already being done, you know, or could already be done. Where did you want to start um, council member? Uh, I'm happy to start with, um, staff if, if based on their what what your understanding is of them and why yeah you know, yeah so. again this is one where we, we 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 started with the same conversation could these be combined these are these are two important and big lift pieces of work um i think jennifer mcguire is on so i'll let her um elaborate the difference between simply doing the police staffing work which is a large lift and then the other one is doing all staffing analysis citywide um, um Staff, based on that, what, what Jennifer? Oops. She available? I'm sorry, I can't. I've got so many screens up, I can't necessarily see who's here. Uh, let's. Uh, I think we're trying to get uh, Jennifer McGuire here. So let me uh, let me elaborate just a little bit more. So, Council Member, I think we agree with you that they would. They are important pieces of work at this point the totality of what is requested here is not uh, baked into the work plan for the coming year and so we would look to additional direction for you to prioritize that work above and beyond what we're doing to be clear as we demobilize the eoc and we stand up our recovery functions we will be looking at staffing in, in a significant way so some of this work may be done but the totality of it as we understood it was a very comprehensive in-depth analysis and and potential realignment of staffing that's at this point beyond what we have built in and contemplated to the work plan is how i would answer it at this point uh, i don't know if dave or lee wants to add on i'm uh, or if uh, jennifer is able to join us and that, that look that could be sufficient uh at least it's sufficient for for me, if this is definitely not, you know, sort of a, a standard operating procedure, and it's not something we are already, you know, baking in, um, then I'm 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 fine on that. Then and sort of leaving those standalone. I had one other item I wanted to chat about, but I see Councilmember Esparza raised her hand. I don't know if she wanted to chime in, but I, if if that's been clarified, I'm I'm fine. So, Councilmember Esparza, was there anything else? Councilmember Esparza, did you raise your hand? Yeah, I just raised my hand on this item. So um, obviously I submitted them and I'll, I'm happy to talk about them more later, um, but I brought them up as separate items because they are each a, a big lift. Um, and there are, the reason I pulled out police staffing is a number of issues that were specific to um, the police department, retirements, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's, why I submitted them separately. Okay, thank you. Um, and then lastly is uh, NP17, the Sexual Assault Bill of Rights. I don't know what sort of work exactly will go into that, but I know we've done this previously with some, some Bill of Rights type of work, and I'm curious if that was something that would have come through rules would this have been a green light item and is this something that is maybe not necessarily an extensive amount of work that's going to take you know the course of a year rather is it is it you know work that could be done fairly easily i don't know that so i'd like to get the an assessment i guess from staff um and then maybe an understanding from councilman radenas on you know what her understanding is on the extent of work Yes, I would say top line, we have not done an extensive analysis of workload on these. We were actually kind of iteratively waiting for the prioritization to do some of that analysis. Um, but our expectation, and I think uh, Council Member Rennes is the right one to qualify, that this, this went beyond simply approving a, a, a Bill of Rights to actually doing a lot of the implementation work or follow-on work that would be required to do things differently. But I will let uh, Council Member Rennes uh, speak to her um, her uh, 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 proposal. I don't want to mischaracterize it. I apologize. Uh, could you repeat that question, um, Councilmember Perales? 
Yeah, I was just curious on the extent of what what you were looking for on the sexual assault bill of rights, and so that I could get a, a, a you know an understanding from staff on you know is this something that would be you know a green light item, or is it actually you know a really extensive you know amount of work that that is much more beyond just a bill of rights itself. Right. Well, you know, I I think that there's a lot of work that's already. Uh, being done through the sexual assault work plan um, and uh, and then just the joint meetings that we have been having with the county uh, so far. Um, and so I think the sexual bill of rights really pulls everything together. Um, and, and it, you know, it's not only just an umbrella, but it, it is also, um, you know, the opportunity for the police uh, department to adhere to that. So I don't know that it's that much more uh, in terms of implementation. I would say it, we're closer than than maybe, uh, I hate to say, it, I, you know, I'm not going to call any other priority, but I think we're closer than because we uh, we've all been working on this in this area uh, for the last, you know, three years or so. That I think we're a lot much closer to it, and so um, I th although I don't know if I'm advocating for my own because I'm, I'm I hope I'm not discouraging people from not voting on this because we're closer to it. But because we're so close to it, that I think that we can really, you know, uh, put a uh, um, put a flag in the ground on uh, this this Bill of Rights for sexual assault survivors and and really be proud of the work that we're doing in, um in this area so yeah the, i don't think the implementation is 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 as great as um any other maybe priority that we haven't been working on now, and honestly my my interest here is not to to diminish it or its work it's actually to remove it from a priority to to, to get staff to simply say hey look maybe this is not you know a huge lift that we need to put amongst the rest of these and maybe it really is stuff we have been doing and then maybe there is additional you know work we can add to some of that with this this bill of rights but that it's not you know it's not necessarily something that we need to to include here on this vote that it's again if my thinking is if it had gone through rules would this have gotten a green light that was really the question and i know staff as kip just said didn't do that analysis and so that's kind of what i'm trying to i, I guess ask kip on the spot is are you able to maybe look at this and, and have an understanding of, you know, could this be a green light item? And then that way it, it's going to get done, but it doesn't need to be voted on here. I, I really appreciate that suggestion. Um, although if staff hasn't done the analysis on this, I'm not sure that they, that I would, you know, be comfortable with dropping it if, if it wasn't in, in the green light arena. Um, and so I don't know if I can get that guarantee from staff in terms of having it greenlit. If if I could, then I would absolutely drop it from this list so that we can just move forward with it. I, I, I again, I, 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 there's I want I don't think we're in a position where I can do that on the fly right now. You know, we'd we'd want to do that respectfully and really look at the work and see whether it's there or not. So I I don't feel comfortable being able to give uh, a green light in the moment just because I want to be respectful of the magnitude of work and the importance of it, and I'm not clear on all that is required to implement it at this point. Okay, that's 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 fine. That, that I think that answers you know the question. I think it's just. I think it's just unfortunate the way that we've kind of gone through priority setting this go round because that is one one piece of it that is extremely important, right? Is to actually understand the amount of work that we're talking about to, to, to the process we have done before, right? Green, yellow, red, um, and that was my concern. Was that are we are there some things on here that are maybe would have been green light and and you know and and now we've sort of gone through though and now we're having to weigh them out amongst uh, a bunch of other major policy issues. And um, and that's my concern. And so, but if, if we don't have the answer, then we don't have the answer. If if I could, Council Member, though, I, I think Kip, I think generally we did do that. We we did look at anything on here that was a an easy green light, and and so we we did do that. I think you're pressing the question a little more, and I think Kip's answer is appropriate. But we we did in fact and looked at any all of this to see if anything could be greenlit, and and that way we could kind of clear up the waters, if you will. And obviously, in this case, we decided not to you know, say this was a, a, a kind of a green light and it's important that it stay on the process. 
Okay, that is helpful to have that, yeah. that understanding. At least you took you took a, a look at it in that light. So, um, yeah, so Alice, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt okay. you and ask you to? I, I know um, Jennifer McGuire has been working really closely with us on sexual assault, and I know I, you know I know that uh, our city manager and 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 Jennifer McGuire obviously are in tandem with with each other. But I wonder if maybe Jennifer could speak on this as well. She, yeah, happy she, to hear from her. She could, council member. She had to step away uh, from her office here for a few minutes, um, and I don't think she's back yet. And, and look, I think that's fine. I think it. It. I was trying to see if again, if it's something that that could get green lit, right, and it and work would continue without having to vote on it here. I don't think that we're going to get to that resolution anyways. So I think it. You know, it remains as an item that that needs to be voted upon. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But that was all of my uh and other questions so that's it for me thanks thank you councilman cross for your valiant efforts to reduce the number of items uh <laughs> councilmember carrasco <laughs> uh, mayor uh I, I wanted to ask a question about one of the items uh on the new policy proposals but it's not on it's not on council member Arenas's sexual assault bill is that okay yeah yeah please do we'll come back to that if uh, if uh, Jennifer rejoins us, and then we can take that okay. issue. Uh, so uh, last week I met with uh, the the good folks from the libraries, and uh, I was uh, told that next month we're going to get an update on the work that's being done regarding preschool. I know that there was a lot of uh, work done in the previous years, and so I just wanted to ask our city manager. <clears throat> If uh, again, if there's any point in moving forward with this as a new uh, priority option, new uh, policy priority option, given that there's going to be some updates on that work in April. Can you repeat the first part, Council Member. I was trying to text with Jennifer to get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, Council uh, NP twenty one which is uh, the one that I was proposing. Uh, there was uh, quite a bit of workup that was done over the past several years. And there was uh, some, uh, the folks from the library said that there was some update that was gonna be uh, presented in the next month in terms of uh, the progress and the status. And so I'm just wondering whether this needs to drop off or if we can continue moving forward on it. Yeah, yeah, so very, yeah, thank you. Good question. So. Um, so, Kip, I don't know if we have any follow-up on that or if Jill or John can shed any light on that. I'm, I'm assuming we looked at this, but uh, the council member's question is basically, you know, is, isn't this already part of our work plan? Yeah, we are doing some work around this area. My understanding, though, this would be kind of a significant increase in focus and, and attention to this work, which is anything that comes onto the citywide roadmap gets that higher level of attention and focus. So. Um, in the absence of this being on the citywide roadmap, we would continue to do some work on it and the work that we're doing. Um, its presence on the citywide roadmap would increase the amount of attention, focus, and effort to that would be the, the bottom line way I would describe it. We don't have um, uh, sort of a you know, fully dedicated uh, team to this, um, uh, though there is, I do want to give John uh, Cicerelli and uh, I believe Ann Grabowski is on from the library. So perhaps John, if there's more that you would like to add in terms of some of the details. Okay, uh, Neil, perhaps. Oh, John is there. There you are, sir. We've got. We cannot hear you if you are talking. He's. He give me the one second. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Working on the technical difficulties. I'll continue vamping for him while he gets himself situated. Can you hear me now? We can. And do you have the context in the question, sir? Can you hear me? Kip? We, can, we can hear you. You can hear me? OK. I can't hear myself, so I'm just going to be talking at myself. <laughs> um, so on this one, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces here, right? There's a, federal, there's a national conversation on this. There's a state conversation on universal pre-K. Um, and so this is likely coming our way. The question is whether it's coming to cities and counties or whether it's going to school districts, right? 
And right now it looks more like it's going to school districts. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of uncertainty about how we would match up with them and what they're doing. Um, but um, we are also already doing some work on this, I think as you're aware, next month in, in NSE committee, we're bringing forward uh, some evaluations of not just our preschool program, but other programs for youth, right? After school pros and et cetera, and looking at where they are now, where we are in this space, right? So the preschool space or the after school space in terms of all the providers in the area and where, uh, where we might be able to go and what our capacity is. So all that analysis is being done right now. And we're doing a presentation in about a month in NSC. So that's sort of the next step in front of us. I don't know if you can hear me, John. Um, I can't hear you. Okay. Um, so, uh, Anne, is there anything that you wanted to add from library perspective? No, we continue to follow um, PRNS's lead and add our support wherever it's appropriate. Um, I, I think I actually I take it back. I will add something. the The intergovernmental relations portion of this is significant, and so I might just encourage um, all of us to think about how to keep the work fresh, um, and that will require that it moves along slowly. Um, but to continue to take in input from all the regulatory bodies that are continuing to impact it, both from a regulatory standpoint, but also a budget standpoint. Yes, so I think bottom line, that we will continue to do work on this regardless of whether it's on the roadmap. Again, I would say that the, the distinction though is, is how, how much we're leaning forward on this and how, how much we're able to put additional staff and resources to that would be uh, partially determined by whether it makes the citywide roadmap or not. Yeah. And I believe uh, Jennifer McGuire has joined us just uh, for context. Okay. So, uh, so uh, you know, um, I, I go back, I guess, to the original question as to whether or not we leave it uh, on there and whether I'm going to use a, a vote given that there's, there's already significant, significant work that's being done and that it's going to stay on people's uh, workload. Uh, uh, and, and given the context that it is part of a national and statewide convo, um, and so, so I'm looking to you to try and understand what it means uh, to stay out on people's workload. Uh, you know, so if if it were if it were not on if it didn't make it to the top, you know, five or top two or what have you policies here as we're voting, uh, and it still stayed on your workload, uh, you know, what, what's the what's the difference between one and the other? <clears throat> Yeah, and I guess, you know, Kip can help with this, but certainly, and, you know, we're, we're not wanting to play games here with you we all, and I think, as I mentioned, you know, we did kind of look at these things, and if we could, if we could green light them, in, in other words, if we could say, no, they are absolutely part of our current work plan, then, then we, you know, we would have proposed taking them off. You know, on the other side, I, I assume that when, when all of you submitted your items, you know, you, you wanted to place emphasis on certain things that maybe you were concerned really aren't part of the work plan. And so that's why there would be reluctance on our part to kind of be presumptuous about that. Um, and so, I, you know, I think there's, there's some risk about taking something off of here and not going through the process because I think, you know, items that get voted on and get placed into the roadmap, you know, our commitment is they will get done. Um, and we will be accountable to that. Um, you know, if, if they don't end up on the roadmap, you know, Kip has talked a little bit about kind of where we go from there and, and will other things get done? Yes, they will, uh, I think here and there, and, and we'll do our best of course. Um, but, um, you know, getting on the roadmap is as much as we can do to kind of guarantee that it's gonna get done. I don't know if that helps council member. Yeah, it, it does. It, it, uh, it, it gives me some clarity. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Then. Thank you so much. Yep, can I make a clarification? Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, sure, John. Thanks. Um, so uh, council member uh, Carrasco, so just to be clear for, for what the work product we're doing coming to NSC, it's really just an analysis. Beyond that analysis, there isn't a work plan to, for example, start universal pre-K in, in the city of San Jose by the city of San Jose, right? We, it's more informational and we're giving you information as a city council, which was the request by the committee 
But beyond that, unless there's some decision made to go forward, there is no work plan that says PRNS or the city is going to enact universal pre-K. So just for clarification. I think that's significant. And I think that that's the distinction that I wanted to hear. So uh, I, I'm a lot more comfortable now uh, being able to hear that distinction. An analysis, I, we can make an analysis just about uh, on just about anything, uh, but the analysis doesn't actually uh, set the, uh, you know, the, the goals of a city nor does it move the needle uh, for our family. So that that uh, that definitely gives me the clarity that I was looking for. So thank you so much. <clears throat> and, 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 and by the way, uh, thank you for the clarity. Uh, and I hope that my colleagues will be hearing that clarity as crystal clear as I'm hearing it as we're moving forward in terms of our recovery and our resilience and as we're rebuilding our city. Thank you. Thank you, council member. So uh, mayor, um, uh, yeah. Um, Jennifer is back on Great. If, we, if we did want to revisit. And so and I do appreciate uh, Council Member Carrasco's question because I think it's, we are trying to get the clarity. So the question for Jennifer McGuire is uh, on NP17, can we more or less guarantee this will get done green light if, even if it's not on the work plan because it fits in so much with what we're already doing. So Jennifer, that's the question for you. Yes, and I apologize for having to step away, but, um, you know, I just conferred with the police department and uh, Chief Tyndall has said that, yes, um, they would, they'll put this on their work plan along with all of the other sexual assault response strategy work that they're doing. They've already started some of this work. So, um, yes, um, we can take this off of this and just fold it into their existing work plan. And so, and Jennifer, so that means we're, we're, we're guaranteeing, guaranteeing it, it, it will, will still get done. done. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, with that in mind, I'll entertain a motion then to take Mayor. 17 off. I, I'm sorry, someone just asked Mayor. Uh, was, was Mayor, that? That, it's, it's uh, Councilmember Arenas. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to follow up and, uh, and ask you if, I, if you would allow me to uh, speak um, since uh, Jennifer McGuire came back online regarding uh, and uh, and seventeen MP seventeen. Well, yeah, I, I just invited a motion to take the item off if that's if that's what you're looking to do. Well, uh, great, I'll I'll, uh, I'll um I'll do that motion. I'll make that motion to drop NP seventeen from this priority setting, um, a roadmap uh, process, and just thank Jennifer McGuire and also our uh, acting chief Tyndall for. His leadership in this area. I was prepared uh, with uh, with many That's of the it. things that we could do under uh, this Bill of Rights, but it, it sounds like I don't have to um, I don't have to sell this anymore. That this is something that our police department is invested in, and so I'm really happy about that. Thank you. In, in Thank you. Councilman Reyes, okay. we'll we'll continue to report on our progress on this when we do our annual report and then our bi-monthly reports um, under the police department operations and performance to PISFIS. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Council Member Perales. All right, actually, uh, Jennifer's last statement just answered my question, so thanks, that's it. Great, all right. Uh, shall we vote on this item, the removal of NP-17? This is the sexual assault Bill of rights work. Oh, I, I think Tony may have had to step out because she's got a meeting with state assembly member. And so I believe uh, Yasmin may be on. Is that right? Is somebody from the city clerk's office, Yasmin, on by any chance? Okay. Why don't I call the roll for the vote? <laughs> we'll start uh, with... Uh, Let's see here, Councilmember Jimenez. Excuse me, Mayor. Sorry, I missed that. Can you give me one? Yeah, this is on the motion from Councilmember Arenas to remove NP17 sexual assault from the list. So we're just looking for an up or down vote, right? That's right. Uh, yes. Okay. Councilmember Perales? Aye. Uh, Councilmember Cohen? Aye. Uh, Councilmember Carrasco? Aye. Council Member Davis? 
Aye. Councilmember Sparza. Yes. Councilmember Reynas. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Foley. Aye. And Councilmember Mahan. Aye. And I'm also an affirmative vote. Okay, so uh, that item is removed. Are there in other here? questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Jones, <laughs> forgive me. Did you Aye. Aye. Vice Mayor. No worries. Aye. I, I know you're taken out of order and I forgot to come back to you. All right, thank you. That's, that is unanimous. All right, uh, Councilman Reyes, did you have other items? No, is this the time to advocate for your own area? No, it's not. Okay. No, we're going to no. come back to that after we yeah. hear from the public. Thank Do you. Do you have other items to remove or <laughs> to consolidate? No, uh, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Or any questions about the process? All right. I wanted to ask if uh, one of my colleagues would be willing to make the motion to remove the other two items that are identified in the budget message. Uh, that would be subject to council consideration and either approval or rejection tomorrow. Uh, that is specifically uh, the items relating to the resilience core uh, and to the airport connector, both of which would require funding to be able to move forward in any significant way. And council would have the option to consider doing so tomorrow. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, motion from council member Carrasco, second from council member Foley. Any discussion or questions about that issue? Okay. Um, is Yasmin uh, on from the city clerk's office? Okay, if not- Hi, this is Tony. This is Tony. Okay. I, I, I bumped out of the other meeting. I'm, I'm on a meeting on another phone, so I came back over here to call your roll. Okay, great. Uh, we're going to vote then on Councilmember Carrasco's motion. Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Thank you. Corrales? Aye. Cohen? Aye. Carrasco? Aye. Davis? Davis? Aye. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Thank you. Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, now I believe it's time for public comment. Councilman Aranis, you had your hand up. Was that about a question or a... No, that was from before. Okay. Uh... okay. All right. Uh, I believe this is the time for public comment then. So we'll go to the community and come back before we actually vote on the prioritization itself. So uh, Paul Soto. Uh, yes, Paul Soto. Uh, good morning, Council. Thank you for the uh, questions that you asked Councilman Jimenez with respect to those two items. And I believe that Councilwoman Foley framed it correctly, that these are, uh, these are connected. They, one is a consequence of the other. So that the, these are connected with the, within the framework of, of deciding how to fund it. However, I am of... I, I really need to check Jackie's tone and the way that she's talking about citizens that are vulnerable, that have ac absolutely no power to exercise efficacy within their own life to be able to establish themselves in the community. And that's going to accelerate. And the very dismissive tone that she takes with regard to that, that's part of the problem. It's not part of the solution. The Office of Racial Equity functions within the context of city government the, why it functions is to offset, amend, and correct the economic, social, political, infrastructure, park deficiencies that are a result of institutionalized and systemic racist white supremacist policies that are still endemic to the allocation of resources, the administration of justice, policing, park allocation. If I'm mistaken, then please, by all means, check me. If I'm not, then I ask for a prioritization of policy that concretely addresses these inequities explicitly within the context of your decisions today. That's why we're here. So to, to, to talk about equity with your mouth and not have the concrete policy that actually reflects that is, 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 a, is a disservice to, to the principles by which that office stands to begin with. I don't wanna see the work of the Office of Racial Equity choked because it's not funded properly. 
It needs additional staff because many of these items that you're going to be discussing are going to have to be filtered through that office and that office should have veto power over any policy that is not aligned with the principles of that office to begin with. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey Buchanan. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Um, so I think in terms of the priorities before you, uh, uh, Jeffrey Buchanan speaking on behalf of Working Partnerships USA, uh, would like to encourage uh, the Council to particularly prioritize continuing the work around wage theft prevention and updating that policy. I think it's, a, it's particularly timely looking at this morning's article in, in San Jose Spotlight, highlighting uh, contractors, on, even on city projects, uh, engaging in wage theft. Certainly the work around the responsible contracting ordinance still needs to be brought before the council. And so keeping this priority, it should be one of, I hope, uh, the priorities that you're voting on today. Um, similarly, would encourage the council to support uh, NP18, the, the staffing analysis, uh, the now merged uh, body of work uh, that included N NP6, the recovery commission. Um, and. and you know, realize that there's only two uh, two items that will will likely uh, move forward onto the map today, uh, but appreciate the uh, the proposal also from uh, Council Member Foley around uh, looking at affordable housing policy and our, our public lands here in the city of San Jose. Um, certainly, there's a there's a tremendous amount of work to be done here as a city, but uh, we think all these priorities uh, deserve to uh, be considered. Uh, additionally, the continuing the work around uh, CP1 uh, and the local hiring and, and apprenticeship utilization. Again, uh, even looking at uh, this uh, this morning's article around the uh, uh, the project that was highlighted in Spotlight, uh, seeing issues around how apprentices are not utilized. I think now, as we look at economic recovery in the city, uh, thinking about how apprenticeships can be a pipeline for those who are, are unemployed or underemployed. Uh, getting into the construction careers, particularly with uh, the many projects that we're, we're seeing move forward, uh, at least the commercial projects moving forward, trying to think about how on um, public projects and others that we can uh, create opportunities for utilizing apprentices. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Donna Diaz. Ms. Diaz, we're not able to hear you because your device appears to be muted. Hello, good morning, can you hear me? Hi. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, good morning, um, I just uh, wanted to show my support for NP10 and I also wanna thank Councilman Matt Mayhem. He came to our community a few days ago and he um, uh, brought this uh, proposal to our attention. And, you know, we live next, I live in a condo complex. It's adjacent to uh, a homeless encampment on the corner of Monterey Road and Branham Roads. And uh, this encampment has gotten out of hand over the last couple of years. Um, I, I, uh, I am a single female. I'm afraid to walk in my condo complex alone. Um, let alone go outside of the complex to the local uh, uh, park, uh, Edenville Park, that's only uh, a quarter of a mile away. Um, the homeless have uh, taken over our community. They roam our complex. I have been um, approached, if you will, by a transient that, uh, that threatened me. Um, they throw their trash, they start fires, they leave their feces, um, they park their vehicles uh, and, 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 and dump trash. They do drug transactions. I've seen it with my own eyes, a guy crushing his, uh, his, 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 drug, his drugs in front of us, um, uh, packaging it. Uh, so I, uh, I just uh, want to let you know that I am strongly in support of MP10. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Samina Yusman. Yeah. 
Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Vina Usman. I'm the Government Relations Coordinator for the Council on American Islamic Relations. I urge uh, the Council to vote in favor of the surveillance ordinance and the privacy principles as well. Um, we want, you know, I, I'm again, I've always expressed excitement for the, the Smart Cities plan. The, my concern, though, is that if we don't have a proper uh, process in order to, you know, vet the surveillance technology uh, or other technologies that could infringe on our uh, privacy, it, the privacy principles are are not enforceable. They were just kind of like, you know, um, words. But it, we need to have an ordinance in place, and we need to have a, a privacy commission in order to. Um, in order to vet this type of work, because honestly, you guys have a lot of work to do. You don't have time to be vetting all of the, the equipment. So it's important to have the, the privacy uh, commission in order to, uh, you know, vet the technology, give their recommendation, and um, and I, I strongly urge the, the council to do so. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning. My comments today are my own. I am not speaking for the Sierra Club, though I share its priorities. Thanks to Councilmember Perales and Mayor Licardo for cleaning trash in our waterways yesterday. The problem is truly daunting. The homeless problem is a great concern to all our council members, residents, and of course, uh, unhoused themselves. The human toll is, um, is, is unacceptable, and I support um, uh, urge support for NP10 encampment management strategy. I also support uh, RR5, Urban Greeting Implementation Plan. This should not be viewed as a luxury. We now have documented studies, cause and effect, with comparisons of similar demographics that trees reduce crime. Access to nature provides mental and physical health benefits. Nature provides cost-efficient delivery of ecosystem services that we depend on for our most fundamental needs, clean air and water. I also support uh, CP14, Citywide Transit First Policy Framework. If we want to address our housing concerns, we need a functional transit system. And to get there, it means making light rail run faster. With the international competition uh, to live here both at the high end and to supply labor at the low end, many of our problems in Silicon Valley derive from an increasing uh, disparity of wealth. Probably the least politically contentious way to address this inequality inequity is to raise the minimum wage. I urge support for NP4, analysis of raising the minimum wage. It is not an uh, apocryphal story that Henry Ford created a much larger market for his automobiles by raising the wages of his own workers. We have learned this lesson at various points in American history. While there may be some job losses, unemployment is a political choice. Government can backfill the jobs needed. It would be best uh, to have governments at all level working together, but we should not let uh, that the lack of coordination be an excuse for our city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Perla Flores. Good morning. Um, thank you everybody for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, I work with Community Solutions, a nonprofit that serves sexual assault, human trafficking, and domestic violence survivors. I was calling today to um, urge you to support NP17 and 19. It sounds like NP17 has been taken care of. So thank you, Mayor and Council members. I do wanna take this opportunity to thank Council Member Arenas for your strong support and advocacy on behalf of survivors of gender-based violence. And really, um, particularly with NP17, um, there are a lot of efforts that are currently happening amongst the, the CBO providers to ensure that victim rights for survivors of gender-based violence, particularly sexual, sexual assault, are, cons are um, consistently being interpreted and applied throughout the county because unfortunately that's not happening. And I'm happy to share well, um, with all of you through our Victim Rights Advocacy Project, the work that we're doing to ensure that, that, that again, those um, interpretation and implementation of victim rights are applied consistently across the county and also through a CDAW gender-based violence report that is uh, be, that will be coming out soon. So again, thank you so much, Council Member Renas, for everything that you've done to really keep up focused on, on this important issue. And also again, in support of NP19, uh, we work with roughly 2,500 survivors of gender-based violence every year, and about 40% of them are young adults, transitional age youth. So ensuring, um, you know, producing a coordinated social career ready and educational outcome um, 
programs for youth is really important so that we can support this, these individuals to move out of a cycle of violence and also out of a cycle of poverty. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sky Dolly. Welcome. It appears your device is muted right now. Okay. Can you we hear can me? Hear you. Yeah. Okay, we can. great. My name is Jane Iverson. I'm the president of the Deer Run 2 Homeowners Association on the corner of Branham and Monterey, where we have a large homeless group. I feel the city of San Jose has been using COVID as an excuse for the last year. They say they can't come in and help relocate these people, but yet they're not providing toilets, hand washing stations, anything that would help that issue. Now we have people defecating on our pro property using one of our walls as their own personal toilets. I'd like to totally throw my support behind Councilman Mahan's encampment management strategy used in the city of Oakland very successfully. We also need to not start paying seventy to $500,000 a unit for people to be housed. Oakland also has a beautiful tough shed village that's very successful, clean, and happy. The encampment management strategy would not only remove homeless villages from our schools, our libraries, and our property, it would allow them to get the help they need mentally, financially, job-wise, medically, and actually try to solve the problem instead of just move it to a different area. Again, our single parents with children, the waiting line for them to get some kind of housing is longer almost than anybody else. And I do feel that we should start putting them first as opposed to putting them last when it comes to finding a safe place for them and their children to live. I wanna thank Councilman Mahan for coming to our property yesterday, actually Saturday, and also the area. Anyway, just wanna thank you all, thanks. Thank you, uh, Joshua Quigley. I'm sorry. Joshua, quickly, welcome. Your device appears to be muted, Joshua. Okay, uh, thank you, there Mayor you go. and uh, members of the council. I'm Joshua Quigley, I'm policy manager for Save the Bay. And on behalf of Save the Bay and our community partners, I would once again urge you all to support item RR5, the Urban Greening Implementation Plan. As you consider this roadmap of new priorities following last year's multiple crises, this is an opportunity to make San Jose more resilient to future crises including the impacts of climate change that are already starting to affect the city. Over the past few months, I've had the chance to speak with many of you or your staff about the benefits of the urban greening proposal that Councilmember Davis has offered. Urban greening defends against climate risks like increased urban heat, compromised air quality and localized flooding, and simultaneously supports Climate Smart San Jose goals for greenhouse gas reductions while providing a variety of community benefits like bike and pedestrian safety, urban open space, and less stormwater pollution. And it focuses on the areas of the greatest risk, like neighborhoods that lack tree coverage and regularly experience higher temperatures. This is a single plan that's multi-benefit, forward-looking and equity focused. And that's why it's supported by a coalition of organizations, including local branches of the Sierra Club, Autobahn and the California Native Plant Society and Mothers Out Front, as well as Green Foothills, Greenbelt Alliance, Spur, Our City Forest, the Santa Clara County Open Space Authority and Walk San Jose. But why do this now? Climate, smart, or climate impacts continue to worsen every year. We know we're gonna have more extreme storms, floods, and heat waves, and we need infrastructure that helps the city adapt and reduce harm to city residents. Streets designed to draw people in and create community rather than just move cars through will support San Jose's small businesses and economic recovery. Flood management will protect homes and, and uh, prevent the disruption of businesses, and shade trees will reduce heat health impacts and lower energy use. Climate smart investments have been put off for far too long. Fortunately, the new Biden administration is also prioritizing these types of infrastructure improvements that this plan would accelerate. So once again, I'd like to thank Councilmember Davis for her leadership and urge you all to support item RR5. Thank you. Uh, Alice Kaufman.
Yes, thank you. Good morning, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Alice Kaufman, Legislative Advocacy Director for Green Foothills. Um, well, Josh just, just uh, said a lot of what I was going to say in support of the urban greening proposal, so thank you, Josh. I won't have to repeat myself. Uh, I do want to mention that um, the uh, seven or rather eight environmental groups, including Green Foothills, uh, sent in a letter late on Friday afternoon. Sorry for the, the late uh, submission. Um, I know that it's not... Uh, I don't see it attached to the agenda items, but it, it did go to every council district individually. Um, so you should see that. So, um, so all of our groups are supporting both the urban greening initiative and also the, well, now it would be the combined NP10 and NP20 um, homeless encampment management strategy. We're, I, I, I personally, I can say, was really pleased to see in council member Mahan's memo this idea of a comprehensive strategy addressing not just the trash in the creeks and not just trying to find um, solu housing solutions for uh, for homeless people, for unhoused people, but to have a comprehensive strategy that that combines the two, because it's pretty clear that what we're trying to do right now isn't working. Uh, cleaning up the trash um, as long as we're not addressing the problem of the unhoused population just leads to it, the same problem just comes back again. So addressing these two in a humane and uh, comprehensive way is what's needed to go forward now. And just I'll just come back to the urban greening um, policy. I just want to add to what Josh said. The reason why this needs to happen now, um, and we're aware that the city's got a lot of priorities that you know for you to choose from, but the reason why this needs to be done now is because there's going to be a lot of repaving projects going forward with recent bond uh, measures that have passed. And if we don't take the opportunities now to incorporate urban greening into those projects, those opportunities are not coming back again. So it's really important to prioritize that now. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Susan B, welcome. Hi, I'm Susan Butler Graham, chapter coordinator for Mothers Out Front Silicon Valley, representing over 2,000 local supporters. As you weigh where to place your votes, we ask you to keep in mind that the climate crisis continues unabated, hits low-income and BIPOC communities first and worst, and exacerbates many of the other problems we confront, such as wildfires, disease, and drought. We urge you to prioritize the following options to protect the health and safety of residents today, and help preserve a livable climate for all our children tomorrow. RR5, Urban Greening Implementation Plan, proposed by Councilmember Davis to prioritize, design, and fund the construction of green streets and other urban greening and native planting elements. This will improve residents' physical and mental health and draw down carbon. NP11, Energy Efficiency Through Retrofitting, proposed by Councilmember Cohen, to provide good local jobs for residents in retrofitting public and private buildings to be more energy efficient. This will leverage grants and other funding to put people to work, reduce our carbon footprint and help residents save money on energy bills. Our to reduce traffic congestion, improve air quality, reduce employer and employee costs and reduce GHG emissions. The city should support remote work options whenever feasible. NP13, Modernizing Traffic Signals Citywide, proposed by Council Member Cohen to modernize and centralize traffic management. This will reduce emissions, improve the flow of traffic, and likely reduce the response time of first responders. And um, the combined NP10 and 20 encampment management strategy proposed by Council Members Mayen and Foley to improve conditions for unhoused residents living in encampments while also protecting public spaces and community institutions like creeks, trails, and schools. Um, we also support NP1 and NP15 um, and urge I'm sorry. I think we just lost your connection in the closing seconds. That's fine. Uh, thank you for your consideration. That's all. Thanks. Okay, Susan, did you want to try repeating that last sentence here just so we could hear you? Just that, so we know you've removed NP1 and NP15 from the list, but we strongly support both these new policies and urge you to adopt them later as part okay. of the budget. Thanks. Great, thank you very much. All right, uh, Ethan uh, Gregory Dodge.
Yes, hi. My name is uh, Ethan Gregory Dodge. I'm with the Citizens Privacy Coalition of Santa Clara County. Um, and I'm here to express my support and urge you to vote for NP16, the San Jose Surveillance Ordinance. Uh, San Jose stated very in a very public fashion that Black Lives Matter and that police reform is necessary. Uh, one of the quickest, easiest, and cheapest ways for you to demonstrate that commitment is by prioritizing NP16. Just this past October, the council approved $160,000 of police budget to go towards predictive policing software. Predictive policing algorithms have been publicly proven to have deep racial biases that lead to the disproportionate arrests of black and brown individuals. Um, if the city would have already had the ordinance in place being proposed in NP16, the software would have been subject to review by a citizen's privacy advisory commission, and they would have advised the council accordingly. They definitely would have caught and pointed out those racial biases. Uh, this model is working tremendously in Oakland, San Francisco, Davis, and Santa Clara County. San Diego and the state of Utah have just approved uh, uh, the same model. Um, it's time for San Jose, the capital of Silicon Valley, to regulate the dangerous technologies being developed in our own backyard, especially as we deploy them in our smart uh, city initiative. Um, please vote to prioritize NP16. It's also supported by 30 plus organizations. Um, I'm just going to read those off if I get cut off. Um, that's fine, but uh, they are the ACLU of Northern California, the African American Community Service Agency, Asian Law Alliance, Black Outreach San Jose, the uh, Center for Employment Training, Change Santa Clara County, Citizens Privacy Coalition of Santa Clara County, Coalition for Justice and Accountability, the Council on Is American Islamic Relations, Data for Humanity, Electronic Frontier Foundation and Code Justice, Hero Tent, Filipino, Association for Workers and Immigrants, Sacred Heart Community Service, San Jose Peace and Justice Center, uh, the Silicon Valley NAACP, um, Silicon Valley Debug, um, Youth Hype, you many uh, Alliance Committee, among many others. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Blair, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for the words of both Ethan and Samina today. Um, I think there's really good organization ideas that can make things really simple and easy for yourselves uh, in the efforts of uh, technology accountability practices. I hope we are learning how we also need to consider that natural disasters should be a regular function of a city government and community planning. In the SFA area in the next five to 10 years, wildfires, its electrical outages, sea level rise issues, and a possible large earthquake are strong possibilities. In some of our first steps out of the era of COVID-19 and the good questions of equity reimagine and planning a sustainable community future here today, I hope we can also begin to more openly consider a future that as human beings, we simply do not have to harm each other or cause mass death in order to work towards important idealism and good goals in the future of large scale social planning ideas and needs. I feel this is how to understand the language of a more genuine, positive, sustainable community future. Uh, from this, the SF Bay Area in California has an important role to help define a more open democratic future of good human rights and civil protection practices, accountability, ideas of equity, and open public policies in its day-to-day -day community practices. Thank you for considering today a San Jose San, uh, Surveillance Technology Ordinance and Privacy Advocacy Commission concepts, ideas that may be partly based on San Jose Sunshine Ordinance ideas of 2006 and 7. A part of a community sustainability is always wanting to consider open public policy and responsible community practices uh, that, that can help in this effort, and what can be overall better connections between the everyday public and local government. Thank you in a more peaceful, better reason, democratic future we are all part of and building at this time. And I wanted to quickly uh, offer that uh, thank you for allowing two minutes today. Maybe this is a time to consider 90 seconds uh, instead of two minutes uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Shani Kleinhaus. Good afternoon, or actually morning, Mayor Ricardo and City Council. I speak on behalf of Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society with seven other organizations. We submitted the letter on Friday in support of the comprehensive uh, homeless encampment uh, for a project. And we are glad that uh, the uh, safe relocation was added to it. I visited uh, downtown San Jose about 10 days ago, 
and walked along the Guadalupe and Los Gatos Creek. And, it, and what's happening to the creeks is tragic. And what is happening to the people living along those creeks is also tragic. And I think especially women. I did not expect to see such heartbreaking scenes as I did. And so these two priorities really are critically important to look comprehensively and develop strategies that help the people that live there and the creeks and all the wildlife that live in the creeks um, and the plants. On the urban greening uh, priority RR5 that we also supported and continue to support, I think Alice Kaufman expressed what is so critical as to why it is needed now. Funding is going to be available for uh, infrastructure projects, stormwater projects, other um, greenway projects, and so on. And so to adopt a strategy that includes the um, benefits to the community and to ecology and to um, resilience to climate change in those plans are really important to do now before the funding is available and we did concrete and then there is no green in it. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Easy, Saidi. Thank you so much for everything wonderful you all are doing. I uh, am a resident of the San, uh, the mobile, by the way, you can hear me, right? <laughs> yes, we can hear you fine. Thank you. The Lamplighter Mobile Home Park, uh, uh, I'm a resident and a member of the, of the Homeowners Association. I have a few priorities that I uh, significantly support, but I wanted to start with, I support everything said by Ms. Samina Osmani and would like to add that this, uh, you know, NP16 really impacts the Muslim community, especially since surveillance has been used throughout the Muslim community in the country. So it is especially imp impactful to have such an ordinance in place. Also the fact that we in San Jose are leaders to the country. A lot of what we do is adopted by the, uh, other communities. So that is extremely important. The other item I wanted to support is RR5, urban greening. In urban greening to raise awareness to the fact that there are urban green areas that are being destroyed uh, far, far beyond what uh, would normally be considered uh, appropriate live in what is what used to be the migration grounds of these white you know swarms of uh, seagulls that used to pass pass through here and my own home and the developments further north of 237 and north first street are happening the, over the guadalupe uh, 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 trail which is completely taking over you know you barely see the migration anymore and just last year uh, there was a big flock of gulls that were uh, rotating on ab above something and a huge helicopter came and basically drove them away so you know we are the sentient species on this planet we i believe it would be extremely important for us it should be extremely important for us to pay heed to the fact that we are squatting on the resources that are used by other species and to be cognizant of them. Uh, thank you so much. I, I also would agree with 90 seconds just to give you guys the time to do what you're doing. I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lena Ian. Forgive me if I mispronounce your last name, Lena. Great. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Lena Ayan, and I'm speaking today on behalf of the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority to share our strong support for the Comprehensive Urban Greening Strategy and Implementation Plan, RR5, echoing the support already voiced by representatives from the Save the Bay, Green Foothills, Mothers Out Front, and several other organizations in support of this important action. The City of San Jose has demonstrated and continues to demonstrate significant climate leadership. The Open Space Authority believes that one of the most effective steps that the city can take to ensure the realization of these bold planning efforts is to create a comprehensive strategy to implement nature-based solutions in urban areas. Therefore, we urge the prioritization of urban greening strategy and implementation plan in the city's annual priority setting process that would build on this record from the city of climate leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adriana? Hello, good morning. Welcome. Okay, great. Um, I'm Adriana Caldera and I uh, am with YWCA Golden Gate Silicon Valley. And I just wanted to um, urge prioritization of MP number 19, which is a strategic alignment of youth development program. 
Um, just noting that a coordinated, having coordinated social programs that focus on career readiness and educational outcomes for youth in our communities is critical, um, especially to ensure that all children have access to these types of services. So I'm um, just urging that you prioritize that. I was also going to urge to prioritize NP number seven, the Survivor Bill of Rights, but I saw you all have already moved that off the docket and I just wanna thank the city um, and in particular council member Arenas for um, prioritizing the needs of sexual assault survivors in our community and continuing to do this um, much needed critical work. Um, we are one of the rape crisis centers um, in uh, Santa Clara County. And uh, over the past year during the uh, pandemic, we have seen a 120% increase in requests for services from sexual assault survivors. We've seen a increase of 36% in crisis calls. Um, and we expect that these numbers will continue um, even as a vaccination becomes um, more readily available and we uh, see more survivors coming in person. So just thank you for continuing to pr prioritize this work and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Brandy? Brandy, uh, Pierce, we're not able to hear you right now. There we go, I think we heard something. Okay, great. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. I'm dropping in to show my support of the pri prioritization of the comprehensive strategy put forth by Council Member Mahan and I encourage that any encampment management initiatives require it to be done with the relocation when these encampments are in these sensitive areas that not only impact the environment, but also the neighborhoods and schools and parks. Uh, as a citizen who's currently living next to a homeless encampment, um, directly on the backside of our wall, a relocation to a safer, more manageable area for city services is key here and needs to be prioritized to help improve the conditions of these unhoused residents. But the current response from the housing department um, from our continuous contact with them is apparently that um, which is just to offer services to those unhoused residents who wanna take advantage and do nothing about those who do wanna stay in these neighborhoods and waterways and continue to engage in dangerous activities to the environment and to, to our citizens. So that would be uh, where I would throw my support. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa Hong. Thank you, City Council members, City Mayor Licardo and staff. My name is Melissa Hong, Director of Early Learning at First Sight Santa Clara County, here to express support for NP21, Universal Preschool Policy. In COVID-19 recovery, nothing has become clear that the integral role that childcare plays in keeping the city's economic engine running. Access to affordable, high quality childcare is key component of economic stability. If parents can't find care, their ability to work is threatened, impacting their financial well-being and putting our economy at risk. In order to provide long-term solution to sustain a strong economic foundation, implementing universal preschool is key. It's important to understand that expanding universal preschool policy not only provides strong foundation for the economy and expands educational opportunities for children, it promotes equitable opportunities for women, especially women of color, who are in high proportion, are represented among people who own and operate childcare programs. I urge you all to support MP21, Universal Preschool Policy. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Keith Morales. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, City Council members, um, for having us here today. Um, one of the things that I wanted to highlight is, as you know, uh, through the pandemic, many of our most vulnerable families have been disproportionately disadvantaged as a result of the pandemic, further isolating our families and our children in the most um, vulnerable communities throughout San Jose. We have 20 family resource centers, over 20 family resource centers that are currently serving families with vital resources during, during the pandemic that um, they wouldn't otherwise have access to. And that's partially um, as a result of the gracious um, contributions from the city of San Jose EOC. But one of the things that we really wanted to highlight is even prior to the pandemic, many families were already faced with isolation in which, you know, there's a higher um, risk for uh, 
child abuse and neglect, especially with the current situation and, and conditions. We know families with um, a lack of affordable housing and, and, and support, supportive resources. Um, families are living in multiple dwelling units. And in, in that isolation, we know that um, as um, some, I think the YWCA staff said was there is an increase in the sexual assault uh, cases. And we know that if that's happening in isolation, we know that with our youngest children in particular, who are, you know, uh, collectively as a group, the zero to five population is the second uh, targeted um, uh, population to sexual assault. So for us, we really thank you for moving that off the uh, uh, the consent today and guaranteeing that moving forward. And thank Council Member uh, Arenas for her continuous support. We hope that we could see this as an opportunity for us to continue our partnership to ensure that children and youth have access to pro-social supports coming out of the pandemic as, as, a, as a means of rebuilding and a pathway to a recovery. So thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Okay. Uh, I'm Linda Ruthruff. I am the conservation chair for the California Native Plant Society Santa Clara Valley chapter. And I'm speaking in support of RR5, the urban greening. People need nature. Our bodies and our minds developed in the context of the natural world. So we function better when we spend time in natural environments. There's a large body of scientific literature that spells out the many health, intellectual, and psychological benefits of spending time in nature. There was a 10-year study in a Pennsylvania hospital that looked at two groups of patients with one very simple difference, the view out their window. Either their windows looked out onto trees or a brick wall. Those with the view of trees healed faster, had shorter hospital stays, used fewer painkillers, and there were fewer negative comments recorded in the nurse's notes. Pretty amazing. Take a walk in the park versus a walk on a city street. Your blood pressure will go down. Your immune system will improve. You'll experience decreased fear and anger, enhanced mental alertness, improved attention and intellectual functions. We need to integrate nature into the built environment where people work and live. This is where we spend our time. It isn't enough to have parks out there that you have to get in your car to visit. Our struggling families don't have the time or resources to do this. We need to bring nature to all of our residents. We need to integrate it into our public works projects. This needs our immediate attention. Thank you. Thank you, Devyani. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Subdeep, and I have my wife, Devyani, with me. Uh, we are uh, residents at uh, Deer Ranch Circle, and I wanted to uh, express my support for Council Member Matt's uh, proposal, which is a uh, NP10, and I and I second the thoughts expressed by uh, Donna and uh, Brandy, uh, who are my neighbors. Uh, like recently, the like the the homeless situation has been like expediting at a exponential pace. So if you can prioritize that F NP10 effort, that will be great. But I also want to bring everyone's attention to the rise in crime in our community uh, and in this neighborhood. Like, as you all might be aware that there has been two drag races conducted in a matter of like past 30 days. So if city can do something and put more resources so that we can uh, like prevent this, this neighborhood uh, like from further degradation, it will be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Escobar? Good morning, Honorable Mayor and City Council. My name is Paula Escobar and I am a current high school student at Evergreen Valley High School. And I'm here 
in support of NP number seven and NP number 19. As youth, we experience, have experienced several forms of isolation and disconnectivity to our community throughout the pandemic. I believe the city can address this by um, putting students first, putting our needs first and developing youth oriented programs so that we feel connected with our communities and that we have the sufficient resources in order to feel included in order to learn new things and to once again just feel um, connected. Um, furthermore, NP number seven is something super important to press within our city making sure that we protect constituents especially victims of sexual assault is essential for our city to move forward and i believe that we must provide more resources to survivors of sexual assault and we must take better initiatives and create programs specifically oriented towards supporting victims thank you all for your time today i hope you consider funding our youth funding our futures and supporting us through these times thank you thank you paula uh, Victor Sin. Victor, your device appears to be muted. It looks like you're calling from the phone, so to unmute, I think you need to push star six. Good morning, there Mayor you go. and council members. Okay, sorry about it. Good morning, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Victor Sin. I'm a resident of San Jose, the chair of the local chapter of the ACLU of Northern California, and a member of the city's privacy advisory task force. I urge the city council to vote yes on the San Jose Surveillance Ordinance. The digital privacy policy that was adopted by city council in December last year is not adequate for several reasons. Unlike an ordinance, a policy is not legally enforceable, as written, the language of the policy does not seem to include uh, surveillance technologies. The policy also exempts police departments from the notice requirements. The Privacy Advisory Task Force's intended purpose is to give community inputs to the city staff. The task force members and I have researched and analyzed surveillance and privacy concerns only to provide recommendations that were not necessarily adopted. We do not have any authority to stop a proposal that raises serious concerns. I'm also aware that the city currently has no budget to hire a privacy officer. For these reasons, we need a commission that meets consistently, that can make recommendations to the city council on matters of policy, acquisition, and use of surveillance technology and data use, and best practices um, to mitigate okay, any potential negative impact on the use of surveillance technologies while allowing the benefits okay, of the technologies to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's return to council now <clears throat> for deliberation. Uh, we now could, have, okay, go ahead. Yeah, if I could, Mr. Mayor, let me, I just wanna, since we've had five changes, oops, yeah. there we go. Five changes since we last uh, left our heroes, I wanted to kind of go through what those were very quickly and I'll keep this slide up as we are going through it so that people can refer to it. So um, we uh, have now have a three item consolidation, NP6, NP8, and NP3, which is Build Back Better, uh, Citywide COVID-19 Recovery Task Force, and Al Fresco Forever are all a single item in the dark green here. Um, we've also combined NP10 and NP20, which is Encampment Management Strategy, and unhoused resident safe relocation policy, which is now in dark blue here and here. And then we have uh, committed to following through as a, a departmental priority on the sexual assault bill of rights work that will be in the departmental work plans and is committed to. And then we have deferred for discussion until tomorrow's uh, conversation around the bear's budget message, uh, the priorities related to the airport connector and the resiliency core. So otherwise it remains the same. So we're about 38 items, uh, which we would be uh, assigning points to. So I'll, I'll hand it back to you. And we had recommended about uh, five minutes per council member for conversation and advocacy before we uh, allocate the points. Thank you, Kip. Okay, let's uh, go to council then. Mayor, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is there a, a question? question? Yeah, I just have, I, I, I just want some clarity 
-hmm. again around uh, the CP section, uh, which are the priorities that are backlogged. If I could just get, uh, you know, I know we've already talked about this at nauseum, but you, these these are the items that we voted on in previous years, and given some uncomfortable uh, situations uh, that have come up. Uh, you know, I think Jeffrey Buchanan alluded, or even mentioned it directly, um, uh, something that happened just recently regarding, I think it was the wage theft uh, policy. You know, I thought some of these items were much further along than than I had uh, originally thought. Uh, the cannabis policy has now been removed, but uh, I, I, you know, if I could just get from staff, even if at least briefly, an understanding as to the rest of the items, are are we not at least like 80, 90 percent? On, on, I don't want to go down every single one of them. I, you know, I just want a, a, a greater overview. Could we not possibly say that that these are further along than not? We could not. We are not, on, not track on track to complete track. these items, items. and yeah. it, it, without, without them, them being prioritized, prioritized, we would not, not be in a position to complete them in the, the next, next fiscal year. year. Okay. So, so I'm just going to ask you, I guess, one specific question about just two items, because I just thought that we were, and given that they were actually prioritized uh, many moons ago. In fact, I, I've been on council for almost seven years, and two items that were passed, uh, you know, uh, almost as long as I've been on council was the local hiring uh, CP1 and CP16. Yeah, so I so think if we have uh, uh, Matt, Matt Kano, Kano, I'm getting an echo. If folks could mute their devices, that'd be helpful. Yes, Kip, um, this is Matt Kano, I'm here. Yeah, could you speak to the CP1 local hiring and apprentice program and CP16 update on wage theft prevention policy? I believe those fall within your domain. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Matt Kino, Director of Public Works. Um, on the local hire, we actually are on track to bring a report on the status to the CED committee within the next few months. Um, so we have done a lot of research on what the percentage of local hire is in our city CIP construction worker, pro uh, what the local percentage of construction workers is on our city's capital program and our projects. And we are bringing that to council committee for discussion in the next few months. And um, we, um, we may not have the capacity to um, implement an extremely robust program. However, we are bringing some options forward to council in the next few months on that. Um, so we have been able to continue to do work on local hire during this pandemic. On wage theft, we um, just pre pandemic I think it was February of last year, we had a presentation to the mayor and city council and we had some takeaways as staff um, to go back and research. And unfortunately, given the pandemic and given the shift of other priorities, and especially a lot of my team who has been really focused on both of these items have focused a lot on sick leave and other um, COVID related items. We have not been able to continue to work on wage theft. I do wanna indicate though that on wage theft, we have had a lot of conversations in the past year back and forth with Sacramento and using our lobbyists to see um, how we can help and or track um, statewide um, changes that can help um, with worker protections from wage theft. And so with that, we'd be happy to, um, I'd be happy to help answer any additional questions. Uh, thank you. And, and, uh, and okay, uh, I, I would just think that, that these would be integrated into everything that we do. Um, just like some of the other items that we're, we're talking about uh, in terms of how we do business, uh, how we conduct ourselves and, you know, how we, how we continue to um, uh, move forward with contracts, given uh, some of the, the atrocities that we've seen perpetrated on our on our employees, not our employees necessarily, but the employees or the, the workers in the city of San Jose and what we've seen 
In fact, you know, even in our in the core of San Jose, and now with the tiny homes that we just saw, you know, I think it was in the spotlight article. Um, I, I just thought we were further along. And then the other question is CP eleven. This is part of a, this is part of a wider uh, concern, and I thought that was also uh, part of uh, of the of the housing uh, work plan. And I thought that was also uh, moving and had had uh, had already a robust work plan and was a lot farther. I didn't think that I would see this on our uh, options. <clears throat> so could you could you just tell me where we are on that on CP11? Sure. sure. Uh, let me see if, if again, again, I'm, I'm echoing. Hi, hi. Jackie's here. If, if, is Kim here as well? Um, just a second, Jackie. I want to make sure we got all, all that lined up. Go, you, you, um, I don't know if Kim's able to join us. It doesn't look like it. So we'll start with Jackie. All right, Kim's here. Oh, Kim is here. Let's start with Kim and then go yeah, to Jackie. I would let Jackie answer the question now. It's just coming to CEG as a progress report <clears throat> in a few weeks. Yes. Yeah, so it is in the housing department and um, we are working on it. It is, we're uh, working very closely with HCD, which is who we have to have. It's the state housing community development office. So it was um, temporarily removed from our work plan it, or not removed, but it was, we were not able to progress on it because of staffing issues. We just, a new staff person just uh, joined and we'll be adding another person, which will help to continue to move this one along. So this one we are going to continue working on. Clarification. Uh, is that CP11? So I'm sorry. Just point of clarification. Is that CP11, Jackie? Yeah, yeah CP11, the anti-displacement uh, preference ordinance, which uh, which was addressing uh, you know the anti-displacement and. Um, gentrification that we've been so concerned about. Yes, I think because it was not on the top 10, it ended up being on this list, um, but it is something that's on the department's work plan. So we are, it it is a priority for the department and is uh, for this, uh, for this calendar and next calendar year until it's done. So, so is this an item that we could uh, say that doesn't actually have to be here as part of the uh, options? Council member, if I could, I think, you know, it, 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 some of it is a matter, matter of volume, but a part of it is also the interaction of items. So if I could just play something out as, an, as, a, as a hypothetical, for example, you know, we've one of two of the items that we've combined NP10 and NP20 um, encampment management strategy and unhoused resident safe relocation. You know, it's part of the differences between being on the roadmap or not is what do we ask the leadership and the organization to put their effort on. So, for example, if those two, which are now combined, were prioritized and the uh, item C, uh, CP11 anti-displacement preference ordinance wasn't, um, there might be more emphasis on the items that were prioritized. If we had to choose between the two, we would put more emphasis on the ones that are on the citywide roadmap relative to the ones that are, that are departmental priorities. So departmental priorities do proceed without being on the citywide roadmap, but if, if push comes to shove and choices have to be made in terms of resources, allocation and leadership time, then we would default to placing more emphasis on those which are on the citywide roadmap. And our, our feeling, feeling as we looked, as we looked at, at these was, was that, that we wanted, wanted to come, come back, back to you and see if you wanted to maintain them as citywide priorities. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. You know, uh, the, the, the disappointing part of it is, of course, the pandemic came, it hit, uh, you know, it, it scrambled all of our, um, all of our workload, including our, our council offices. So, you, you know, I, I get that. I, it doesn't, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not blind to all of what has happened this past year, but uh, everything that's on that CP line 
were items that we did vote and they ro they rose to the top uh, at some point when we did this exact <laughs> same process. And so they were priorities. And so I just wanna be clear and I wanna just state it. I know that I'm restating what others have already <laughs> stated at some point. And I, I just wanna state it before we start voting again, that as we're considering all of this, uh, I, I hear you loud and clear that we don't want to take it off because there might be an opportunity to vote on it yet again. But these were the items that we had voted on it. These were the items that we had submitted uh, different council offices, folks that are no longer here necessarily, <laughs> uh, but we had voted on it. Uh, uh, prior councils had, had uh, taken up this process and these were the items that had risen to the top. Now they're back here again, having to compete with now a new council who is submitting new po uh, policy items, which is disappointing for me because, you know, CP1 was mine, uh, you know, CP16 uh, was mine, uh, CP9, uh, uh, the Cannabis Equity uh, Applicant Program was another one of my priorities. Uh, CP20, the private percent for art was another one of mine. Uh, you know, so I'm looking at those items that were very important to me. I was able to convince my council colleagues to, you know, I was able to convince them to give me their vote. It rose to the top and now, uh, they're going to be put on hold as we're now competing and, and for good reasons, we're now competing for, for changing priorities because a pandemic has hit. So I get it. Yeah. Priorities have changed in my house as well. <clears throat> but, uh, but I just want to be able to restate that, that it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated that now I have to, you know, wage theft, I have to look at wage theft in light of what just happened, what I just read in an article, which is a huge concern to me. Um, and I have, and it has to compete with uh, my community that is uh, reeling from displacement. The Alam Rock School District is about to close anywhere from four to 10 schools because families are leaving in droves out of this area because they just can't afford it. And I'm going to try and convince my colleagues to really consider reconvening a task force to look at uh, raising the minimum wage because my families just can't afford to be here anymore. Uh, so, you know, and I only got five points. Five points that I have to, I have to, you know, dole out between those priorities that were really important to me and now, you know, now new ones that have to compete with ones that had already made it to the top. So I'm, I'm a little frustrated uh, that I have to relook at uh, the priorities that had already made it to the top. We're reshuffling them. <clears throat> I, I just needed to, I just needed to, um, I don't think it's anybody's fault, by the way. I wanna be clear on that. I don't think it's staff's fault, uh, but I, and some of this is just a natural, um, it's the nature of the beast, I guess, to some extent, but I, it, it is extremely frustrating. It's, a, it's just extremely frustrating. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Councilman Trasco, could I? I know we're hearing an echo still. If folks happen to have two devices on in their rooms, we appreciate you can turn one off. Um, Councilman Crosso, could I offer one suggestion? And and Kip, forgive me if you guys are already ahead of me on this, but is is it fair to assume that the unfinished unfinished priorities will remain in a separate list of unfinished priorities, even after we vote on the top two? Now, those top two may come from this list of unfinished or they may come from others, but this will still be essentially the next set of priorities that if resources expand and as we move out of this pandemic and so forth, we may be able to get to. Um, 
so they won't lose their status as something that has already been voted on. It, yes. Is that correct, Kip? Yes, and you know, we essentially just to be empathetic and sympathetic. There, there are 38 great ideas here. We'd we'd love to do all of them. Um, but what you'll get out of today is the, the two of the priorities will become officially on the roadmap. There'll be a next step, which will be the top next piece, and everything else on this list will stay here. And as resources become available, this will be the first place that we look to begin to prioritize resources. So it will be deprioritized on the backlog, but it will be the next thing in 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 the uh, queue for what we would prioritize. But just to be clear, though, what's in blue there, the unfinished priorities would take priority over whatever's in green, yellow or orange that remains because the council has actually at some point weighed in and said these are priorities. Um, with one exception, at the end of the exercise today, you will have you will the the ones that didn't two will be from the top. Yes, um, there will be additional maybe four to six items which you have prioritized. So those will essentially go uh, into consideration as well. So the the idea, yeah, the idea is that we we would like you to we would like you to vote if you want any of those items that are in blue to be prioritized either absolutely as a policy that we add to the roadmap or as the next thing definitely in line, we would look to you to um, do that with your point allocation. Because there has been so much shift in the last year, we do believe it's necessary to not assume that these are the absolute top priorities. So that, so is, not our, that is not our going assumption is that these are the absolute top priorities and lists until we have a sense of where you have allocated your points, including looking at those remaining those items that are in blue. But but when we but when we vote, Kip, we're voting on this collectively, right? From from uh, from the blue all the way down to, through the orange. Correct. Exactly. Correct. You're selecting from so all of May, them. So Mayor, our five points, our five points are competing against. In other words, our five points can be allocated in any one of those rows. So in yeah, I'm very point, mindful of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I was getting at a different point, which is whenever we're done allocating whatever our top number of priorities are through this process today, it will be a small number. I, what I thought was two, uh, when the last time we did this, maybe a bit more than two, but it's a small number of priorities that make it through. The hope was that we would essentially have a tier where if resources and time allow, we would then be able to get into what is remaining and unfinished that is in blue before we'd ever consider anything that is not identified as a priority in green, yellow, or orange. We, we'd actually propose a slightly different process than that, Mayor, which is that out of today, you'll have you'll have two outcomes. You'll have the ones that are adopted on the roadmap, and then those that receive points today, but were not necessarily prioritized as the top two would become the priority out of this. So we had, again, we could revise that, but this, the, the staff proposal is that what comes next will be a result of where the points are allocated today, not okay. out of the vote from uh, before the pandemic. Fair point. So so I guess then Councilmember Carrasco, we have, the choice certainly that staff is telling us we can vote today to essentially reshuffle the deck um, or we can vote to set our priorities for the roadmap. Uh, and I guess council can always choose to go by a different process, which is after we've selected uh, those winners, uh, we could resort to as a default that whatever is in blue would come next. Uh, I just want to offer that as a suggestion and as an alternative. Both are certainly reasonable ways to proceed, but I just want to make that explicit so nobody feels as though their hands are tied in one way or another. Councilman Carrasco, did you want to weigh in at all? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I want to hear, I see Councilmember Sparza and Councilmember Perales who, who are interested <laughs> in weighing in on this, and I want to hear their thoughts. You know, the, the I'll just, I'll just, I guess I'll just be, you know, very frank about this. I'm going to see, I'm going to see, you know, I, I've had a few little issues this morning with my uh, internet and let's see if I don't get cut off. Oh, there I went. What happened? No, you're, 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 you're still, with, still us. with us. Okay, let's, let's see if it stays. Uh, uh, I'll just be perfectly frank. You know, um, 
you know, uh, in a couple of years, Mayor, I mean, when you and I are termed out uh, and someone replaces you uh, uh, and, and uh, someone replaces me and they go through this process again, you know, uh, our priorities uh, can be, you know, washed out. And, and, and we know that, we know that that happens, I get that. Uh, but uh, then the process just kind of becomes just an exercise in futility. I mean, uh, you know, we're going through a, an exercise that doesn't necessarily render uh, the, the, the product that we're hoping and, and I get that any given Tuesday, we can, you know, change an ordinance, we can change, you know, a policy if we have enough votes. So we, we know that, that, you know, that that's what can happen. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, uh, I mean, this, this just becomes a very clear example that, that the exercise, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit frustrating. Um, when we're trying to truly move the needle on on certain things, and uh, and and the the institutional memory, the historic context of things, uh, are are kind of getting you know. Um, I'm I'm trying to be uh, you know. Um, yeah, I'm trying, yeah. Be, I'm trying to be diplomatic and gentle about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I'm just uh, a, a little bit frustrated. Uh, I, and it, trust me, I understand that with a pandemic, uh, things can get you know turned upside down. Uh, but I, I do believe that this is where sometimes the belief that sometimes our priorities, uh, you know, that this can be the grave site for some of our priorities. So. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, almost seven years on council, I see some of the priorities that I have put forth that had risen to the top are still there. And now uh, they're going to, you know, drop off or, or really uh, not be, in, be given any sort of um, importance when we had a council that gave it that priority. So that's, that's my concern. I'm going to leave it at that, uh, and I want to hear the the my council's weigh in on it. But I, I do have a real, real concern about how this suddenly gets shifted, um, and you know, I, I think we need to. I I do think that aside from figuring out what the process is, is truly figuring out how we get the work done. So we can move forward with new priorities, and um, and I don't know if that's staffing. I don't know how we move that needle, but we do need to get through those priorities, remove stumbling blocks wherever we can in an expedient uh, way, because uh, you know seven years later, six years later. Um, we, we can't suddenly take that priority that other stakeholders were so vested in, there was a reason for it, and then suddenly say, well, you know, we're going to move on from there. I mean, you know, I'm sure if we did an analysis of how much time and money we invested in it, it it's, uh, it's, it's a lofty investment. So... Okay, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, thank you. I, I just want to make sure we're able to get to everybody. I, I, I think your frustration is widely shared um, over what's happened over the last year. Uh, and I know you understand all of this. I, I also think it's true that a couple years ago, at least for the last couple of years before the pandemic, this process was largely working because we were getting through these priorities. And obviously, we hit a wall with the pandemic. So you know, appreciate the point. And that's why I wanted to explicitly note that option that we could choose to simply say, hey, we're going to pick two to leapfrog all the other priorities, but otherwise we're going to stick with the blue uh, priorities as the next up after that as resources expand, because I think that is an option we can certainly consider. Uh, last thing I just wanted to ask Matt Kano, because this has come up several times in the discussion uh, about the wage theft allegations relating to the Habitat for Humanity project. Uh, Matt, can you just give us a very brief update about whether or not 
you know, the enforcement process work, whether or not there was evidence of intentional wage theft, whatever, whatever it is that we learned through that process. Thanks, Mayor, for the question. Matt Kena, Director of Public Works. And so our priority is to protect workers and engage local workers also in the construction work here in San Jose. Um, in our Office of Labor Compliance, we have about 10, roughly 10 FTEs that works really hard to do this, to track and look at all the compliance documentation on every single city capital project. Um, and that's that's their job, and they've continued to do that through the pandemic, um, and I'm really proud of them, as we all are with many city employees. Um, and unfortunately, on this project, we did, our team uh, did, did, the, did the job, um, the system worked, we did find um, violations, um, we issued the fines for those, um, and we're tracking towards the completion of those fines, a lot of them were related to um, uh, forms and apprenticeship ratios, etc. Um, and if there's anything we did miss, we will definitely follow up on that. Um, uh, but again, as I mentioned, this was a city capital project and our labor compliance specialist was all over it and did find some issues um, that we have followed up on. Um, and it is our policy priority to stop, um, you know, to continue to um, have our staff um, oversee these um, capital projects. Um, the policy priority that is um, on, on the list that we're not working on right now is more related to um, stopping companies from working at the city in the future based on um, past history and practice um, and the um, oversight over current capital projects is really more that is what our staff does so i um, be happy to expand and answer any additional questions thank you thank you Matt. yeah thank you mayor um trying to there we go did um, council member finish Yeah, Councilmember Perales. Yeah, did you finish, Councilmember Perales? It sounds like you did. Well, I, I was just going to ask one, one, one last thing, if I may. Uh, the possibility—I'll make it quick, Mayor. The possibility of a, uh, of a, uh, of a uh, dissecting this vote and voting separately uh, from the rest of the votes and taking C, the CP uh, row separately from the rest of them, just I'll to make sure. Just, Yeah, so we can entertain yeah, motions to do just, do just that, that Councilmember Carrasco. Why don't, why don't we, we hear from, from our okay. colleagues, and then we can entertain different motions okay. about how to proceed if we want to vary from what staff has suggested. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Cross. Yeah, thank you. Um, and hey, look, I'm I am equally I think frustrated that we're we're sort of uh, in this situation and would like to vote for over half of, you know, maybe more close to all of really of, of these priorities, especially the the unfinished ones. Um, I would agree with Councilmember Carrasco on the, the items like local hiring and wage theft that have been sitting there for, for many, many years. Local hiring specifically has been at number one for years. Um, I think that should give us indication that, that at some point being the number one priority would have been finished. Um, and so I'm also not happy with the, the timing and the progress on that. But I get, I get it. We're we're where we're at, and so um, frustration or not, uh, we are sort of now in this boat where we have to to make some decisions. And so, what uh, I was fully prepared and actually was ready to, to to sort of start lobbying on some of the the items, um, including meaning having to allocate some votes for things like local hiring, where you know I don't want to see that work stop, um, but the as was just indicated um i think that is a an interesting suggestion and um i might be willing to to go down that route and i do think we should we should figure that out first because i don't want to start lobbying on you know what the process that currently is proposed by staff if we're going to change it and so i'd like to get some clarification on that M my understanding would be what we've been proposing is that we would separate this uh the the cp items all the uh unfinished work of council priorities uh separate that out and what we would do would then be looking at the the green yellow and orange lists of, of priorities and allocate our five votes throughout those and to 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 find two to find two right top two uh, items and then we would put those top two items in front of the list of the the council priorities and then um, would we just keep that list and the order it is, 
or that's where I'm kind of lost on on what what is being suggested just because I think we we, we don't have yet clarification on it. I know it's just a mayor, you mentioned it briefly. Councilmember Carrasco, you know, said I think she might support that and I'm saying I might support it, but I think we need to get some clarification on what that actually looks like. Yeah, and, and certainly it can be up to us, but just to throw out one idea what it might look like is we identified two items we believe should leapfrog all others, uh, whether they're from the blue section or any other section. Uh, and then uh, after we approve those, we uh, endorse all the blue items as essentially being up next. <clears throat> so I guess that's one the, option. Yeah, I guess the, the difference from what I was explaining would be, I think we're all trying to figure out how we would allocate our, our, our scarce five votes, right? And so if I'm, I'm still having to allocate some of these votes within the, the remaining unfinished work, well, then it's essentially the process that staff has laid out and, you know, I've done my homework, I'm ready to go. But if we're going to change that and we're going to say, hey, we're not having to allocate within that remaining unfinished list, then I can save my five votes for things within the, the other three sections. And we just find two out of those, two new items, right, out of those. And, and then we just simply put them right in front of the unfinished council priority list. And, and I think we can decide if we wanna reshuffle that deck or just leave it as is because it's already been prioritized in, in an order, right? As we see up there, um, I would prefer that. If, if we're gonna go the route where we're just allocating a vote to the remaining unfinished items as well, then I think we'd stick with what staff said because that's essentially what they've proposed. Okay. So uh, we'll hear from a couple more council members and consider a motion on how we should proceed. Council member Carrasco. So, uh, so, uh, and, and that's what I was uh, trying to propose was to, to, dis to separate uh, the, the two, make sure that I wasn't using my votes for the CP uh, priorities. So, uh, just use my allocated five votes for the green, the yellow, the orange. Keep the, the prior uh, work plan separate. Uh, whichever way we, we deem, it, I, 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 I think I'm okay with, uh, you know, we can vet that out right now. But I, I want to make sure that we keep that separate so that that stays on the work plan. Okay, I think the, the one issue, I, we're, we're not we're gonna not avoid, avoid the hard choice of identifying items within the blue section that need priority because staff can't do them all. They've told us that. So I think the one thing we got to sort of grapple with is blue, all the items in blue have to be subjected to some kind of vote for prioritization, whether, whether it's, it's this, this way, way or some, some other, other way, way because, because they're not they're gonna not magically, magically get done just because we think we're all, they're all important, right? Yeah, that, We are still gonna have to prioritize. That's fine, I just don't know how many votes we would get for, for that blue section. So if, if we need to prioritize, give me a magic number and, and, uh, and I'll make the motion. Okay, I'll, so, I'll let uh, uh, Kip, and Kip and smarter folks than me figure that out and we'll, we'll keep going with council comments. Um, council Member Sparta. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I too, whoops, hold on my guess. My iPad's freaking out a little bit. Um, I too would like to separate the um, CP items, the blue section. Um, and so I, uh, for the same reasons that uh, council members Carrasco and Perales already covered. And I had a few questions um, for, is Jackie still up? Jackie, are you still Jackie? on? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so um, so I was a little confused by Kip's response to Councilmember Carrasco's question about NP 10 and 20 and the anti-displacement. And so I pulled up our Horizon report. Um, and so anti-displacement is due to come to the council as well as CED and NSE. Um, is that still correct? Yes, that is. We're, we have reports, uh, updates that we're providing you in both of those committees, and then we're following up with the council meeting. And then, um, so the annual housing action plan that is coming up for us, how is the pandemic um, 
incorporating or how how is housing incorporating the pandemic into that yes or, or no so for the you mean the cdbg the hud annual action plan yeah maybe yeah. maybe it just doesn't matter but i know we use some cdbg yeah. money and so yeah. i i just i'm trying to understand some so of how the pandemic impacted that was we let the council know when we did the caper which was our annual report out that we were not going to change any priorities for this year and we were going to continue we're just going to pull forward the majority of contracts that we had not rfp'd out already uh, for one more year and we would finish the rfp process and any additional changes the next fiscal year Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, and I have a question and I'm not sure who to ask this to. So I'll ask Dave Sykes. Uh, maybe you can help me. I have the roadmap from the first session in front of me. Um, so the uh, enterprise priorities that we approved at the last meeting that we move forward. And so I don't know if you have that in front of you, but there are items under creating housing and presenting, preventing homelessness. Um, there's safe, vibrant, and inclusive neighborhoods that include reemployment and workforce development, small business recovery. Um, there's uh, a section, uh, an enterprise priority, building the San Jose of tomorrow, private development services, where we talk about development projects for the city. And then under the strategies, we talk about equity strategies, neighborhood service access strategies. And so I also had a question about the CPs. Given that we're in a pandemic still, we're still in response. We're not in recovery yet, although hopefully we will soon. Um, the displacement and housing for a lot of folks, as well as the economic recovery of particularly of vulnerable people who have experienced job loss at a greater rate than everybody else. How can we, can we incorporate wage theft um, and local hires into our existing roadmap processes? I don't understand, given that the council has prioritized this and those items in particular, I think, um, address vulnerable people that we want to get working and we want to ensure that we don't have any more wage theft, particularly like in light of the spotlight article this morning. And we're going to be spending, we're still moving ahead with development, we're moving ahead with Google. Why can't we dovetail some of this work into that? Because it looks imbalanced, like we're only promoting development, but we're not promoting protecting vulnerable workers. Yeah, thanks, council member. Um, you know, I, I understand that there's in some of these issues, there's some there's some overlap. Um, you know, I, I guess I just need to step back a bit and just try to kind of talk it through. So certainly the CPs that are up there, those were our priorities going into the pandemic. And each one of them represented, I think, a discrete piece of work. Um, you know, now we, we all acknowledge we're in the pandemic now and our priorities have shifted and we've, you know, I know it is frustrating, um, but these items, you know, they've really, we've, we've stopped making progress on them for some time to different degrees. I think some of them we've, we've tried to move along, others we, we completely stopped working on. And I know that for a fact, um, you know, I agree. There's some overlap with some of these items with, with our recovery work and, and um, and how we want to kind of what we build back better. I totally can see that. Um, you know, I, I think what's hard to do kind of is to, so I think when you look at the title, you can say that, but when you kind of look at some of the, the work that was anticipated, you know, I, I don't know really how to reconcile the fact that, um, you know, some of that overlaps, but some of it doesn't. And if we just kind of throw so much into the roadmap, I, I think we are, you know, kind of setting ourselves up to to not really accomplish everything that we want to accomplish. So, you know, short of trying to go into more depth on each one of these, it's it's hard to kind of generically answer the question. Um, you know, when it comes to local hire, 
yeah, I think we can factor local hire into our recovery efforts and in our rebuilding efforts for sure. But that item I know in itself had a pretty discreet work plan, you know, establishing an apprentice program. There's a lot of work into that. And, and I don't know if we'd be able to kind of fully accomplish those objectives in our recovery work. Maybe pieces of it, yes. Um, so I, I don't know if that helps council member, um, but that's, you know, that's kind of the, where we find ourselves right now. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that because I, I do think, you know, obviously we are moving forward with development um, and it seems like we're leaving a section out um, that is a part of economic recovery and should, you know, could possibly, could some of this work possibly include it, be included in um, under COVID recovery efforts with the federal grants that we're getting, seeing as we're spending that money to build. So why can't we spend that money to protect workers? Yeah, so I would say yes. So you, you said some of that work, you know, I think, I think that the, the answer to that is yes, to, to be fair, of course, you know, whether though, we're able to accomplish everything in CP1 and everything in um, CP16 that was anticipated, I think that's the caveat that has to be in play here. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. I, I, um, I, I also, I, I think we need a separate vote for the CPs. I haven't been on the council for six years like my colleagues, um, but, and I fully, uh, you know, trust me, I mean, very much appreciate we're in a pandemic. My community is one of them that is hammered. I have folks who are still suffering, who are still getting COVID, still dying from COVID, still not able to get vaccinated um, because we had a site closed down this weekend. So these issues are very much still hot. But I also have a lot of folks who are out of work or who would like to work. And I'd like to make sure that they don't get victimized as we recover or further displaced. Um, so I, I do feel that we need to do that. I had another pro process question. I think this is a question for Kip. So the CPs are already prioritized. So you mentioned that as we complete the, um, the backlog initiatives and new policies uh, with our, our roadmap, if, as, if we complete something, city staff can go to the CPs. Is that correct? It could be. We had originally conceived it slightly differently. Um, and what we conceived is that originally, the, our, our current proposal, let me put it that way, which is of course amendable, is that you would be assigning points on all of the items that are here, including the existing council priorities. Out of that, we would get um, three tranches, if you will. First tranche is those things that come on the roadmap. Second tranche would be those things that had points to it, including either previous council priorities or new priorities. Those would become the next priority and would replace, if you will, the existing CP ranking as the priority. And then the third group, which would stay in the backlog, would be those that did not receive points. So that's staff proposal. Um, but we're open to obviously a direction otherwise on that because again- yeah, So you're saying that the new proposed would leapfrog over the items that had already been prioritized by previous councils? Is that what I'm hearing? What I'm saying is that your votes today, uh, which would choose among the, that, those priorities versus the new, would set the new prioritization, yes. So the new priorities, so if you could be really explicit so to help me understand. Yeah. I'm so sure. the new priorities would go at the bottom of the CPs or or at the top? No, it all, think of all of this as, as, as in, in this current staff proposal, all the items on this chart are at the same level. They start as, as equal. Your points determine what rises to the top. You can put points either here or here or here or here in any of the categories. But at the end of the day, the new priority list it's, it's carte blanche, it's a blank slate, and you would be prioritizing based on the reality of today. And if you if points were assigned to any of the council priorities, they would rise up, but there would, no, there would not be a, 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 a 
a prioritization of previous council priorities unless you tell us today that those priorities remain a priority. And so I'm confused because the council priorities are numbered in, in order, right? As something finishes, something then bumps up and bumps up. And so does the whole list go down and the new priorities go on the top and that ranking stays in place? The you are, again, in the recommended proposal, you can vote for either existing priorities or new priorities. All of this work at this point is considered deprioritized until you tell us to prioritize it. So the and if I, if I could, yes, too, let, me, let me try and help a little bit. So yeah, so in the last session, we've already approved the roadmap. It has how many items on it, Kip? It has 40 some items, I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's approved. already been approved. We're trying to add to that and, and yes, council member, that, that all of that work takes precedent over everything on this list, unless something on this list goes on to that, that roadmap. I, I think what's being contemplated here and what I'm hearing is, is perhaps an alternative approach to what we have proposed, which was today's voting exercise would, would merely just identify two items from this list and leapfrog on and get onto the roadmap. And then everything, all the CPs would be the next kind of set of things that we would draw up into the roadmap as capacity. Um, and those available. would be ranked in yes. order. Yes, and to your earlier point, possible for us to drop pieces of the CP items into the roadmap where they could fit, you know, as part of our recovery work or other items that are on the roadmap. Um, I think that's the idea, that's the alternative being contemplated. And I can tell you that we would be very supportive of that alternative yeah. because I think it's it's pretty straightforward for us if that's if that's the approach the council wants to take. Yeah, my preference would be to do a separate vote on the CPs and then the the new proposals. Um, I, I'm uncomfortable. I, I under like I said, I understand we're in a pandemic, but where I'm coming from is previous councils have approved the, the council priorities. And some of them I think are pretty, um, you know, are, are important as part of a pandemic recovery, particularly economic recovery. Um, so again, my preference would be to separate them. And before, and, and as a last thing, um, I just wanted to state um, that on the, I have too many pieces of paper. <laughs> um, as the uh, last item of the deprioritized items, um, oh my gosh, where'd it go? I have all these pieces of paper around me. Um, the Monterey corridor, I did, I know that has a little asterisk. Um, and so, uh, Dave, I wanted to ask you to clarify that. Kip, if you could, oh, there it is, I see it. Um, on EP4. Um, that is a council committee um, that has not met because of the pandemic, and rightly so. Um, it was very staff intensive. Um, it is not a priority. It's a council committee. Right. And so, yes, council member, we did want to designate that, that that's been suspended, but would resume automatically once, once we kind of get beyond, you know, whatever, <laughs> uh, and we're able to do that. because. I think you you had made a, a a a good point that that was committee level work, and so yeah, we we wanted to make sure that we designated that appropriate, and it would resume automatically without a vote. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate. Or, thank you, Dave. I would, I just promoted you, Mayor. Uh, thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. That's it for me. Yes, sir, Sparza. I just want to follow up your comments because I think now there are three options, uh, given the fact you're describing a third. So let me just try to define what I think I've heard so far so we can all just sort of clarify our, our focus. One is what staff has proposed, which essentially is everything's up for grabs and we prioritize today. A second approach would be um, the one that I suggested where we prioritize two items from any of these columns which can leapfrog the others, but the blue items, that is the CPs, would take priority over the others for coming up next. Uh, if with regard to any items that don't make it on the roadmap. The, the third option that you suggest is voting separately on the blue items, 
which I believe necessarily means that since there's only room for a couple items on the roadmap, that nothing in the green, yellow, or orange is going to move onto the roadmap. I just want to make sure we're all explicit so about just, what the implications what are. Up, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So yes. I just want to be clear about what the implications I believe are of these three different models. So we're clear about what it is, what which lane we want to swim down here. Um, and did I describe your proposal correctly? So my proposal would be to, for us to vote on the CPs so that one CP item emerges and then we vote on the new proposals um, so that new proposals also get added. But I am uncomfortable moving forward um, as having new proposals and old proposals um, be evaluated together because the previous items have all been approved and made it through this process, through the council process. And I do believe that some of them are, um, are applicable in a pandemic recovery. So again, as I started, I'm not, I'm not understanding you clearly. Are you suggesting we vote separately to move one blue item forward and then one item out of the green, yellow, and orange items for prioritization onto the roadmap? I would like to do one blue item and two of the green items. Okay, just to check in here with Kip, forgive me, what, what the, what's, the, what's the room we got on the roadmap? How many we, items? We had suggested two, but um, okay. you know we're open to direction. Okay, all right. Um, we, we, we can certainly put uh, many more on. We're still subject to the rules of physics, um, and those will limit uh, the ability of staff to actually get to stuff. So just want everyone to be mindful of that. Um, Councilmember Cohen? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm very uh, um, aware of this challenge that, that, that there's items that have been on the roadmap for a while and have been deprioritized. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable with the direction this is going because we have a large list of items and we know that even in a good year, if everything gets done as we are, you know, everything gets, if things get done in a timely manner and, and recovery happens in a decent, at a decent pace, that perhaps we'll get through, the city will be able to get through maybe four or five more items off of this entire page that we're looking at. And so I think the challenge here is that this is where it gets hard for the council, right? We have to prioritize off this entire page what those four or five things are. And just leaving the blue list and saying, get to them as they get, as we have time, still means that next year we're gonna have a list of probably eight to 10 things off that blue list, plus the rest of this list, plus perhaps new priorities that, that we submit as options. And we'll be back here next year with the same chart in front of us trying to prioritize them. That's why I think it is important that the first vote include all items together because we want the city to know from the council now, given the current circumstances, how much has changed in the last year, what we've had to redeploy, which items, including everything on blue, the city should work on first. Um, that to me is a really important exercise and I know it's hard. I know what we're saying is we'd like to get everything done in blue and we'd like to add some new things because there's some great new things on this list, but we want to be sensitive to what it is that the city can do for us and we should prioritize everything in one list because as the city completes you know as staff completes things on the, the existing roadmap we need clear they need clear direction what's next and it, it's difficult to rank them but if we do this exercise with everything together we'll end up with a ranking and some of the blue items will end up at the top some of the green items will end up at the top and, and we should rank the five to six most important items that we all agree on today would be the next five or six to be done because my suspicion is we're not gonna get past the next five or six items, maybe eight if we're, if ever, if we're really lucky. Um, and I just think we'll be back here next year looking at the same list and, and having the same discussion, but this is our opportunity to say given what's changed. And, and look, if the blue items really are still higher priority, then people might have to rethink what they were planning to vote for. That's why this job is hard that we're doing today. Um, but if, the, you know, if those really are the most important priorities the council has had for the last few years, people should be willing to put their votes to those count those items and say, it's unfortunate that we can't do something in green right now, but blue ones are, are a higher priority. 
Um, so I, my recommendation is that we actually use the staff the, um, proposal process now, because I actually think they're asking for real guidance, what's next? And we have to be willing to give that guidance about what's next. Um, so that, that's, that's, my, that's my feeling that I would support in any of the, staying with the current process. Thank you. Councilmember Davis? Thank you. I uh, agree wholeheartedly with Councilmember Cohen. I think uh, staff is telling us that they do not have enough resources or time uh, or bandwidth to get through everything. And it's, it's up to us. This priority setting is always hard. We always have to revisit what didn't get done in the previous year because there's always so much work to do. And that's doubly true, triply true in this in this last year. And so I I absolutely support the process that staff has put forward. I'm not interested in changing it. Look, I think everything on here, there's there's nothing on here that I that I would say, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but it's our job as the council to tell staff this is more important than that because we we can't say they're all important and and leave it to staff to choose it's up to us to make those choices for our residents that's what we've been elected to do it's not look priority setting is like my least favorite time of the year because it is exactly when the rubber meets the road for us where we have to make these these tough choices so i'm gonna i agree with staff's um view and, and I'll just, I'll put a fine point on it. Things again, that I think are good, but I wouldn't want staff to work on the single use plastic ban, for example, when energy efficiency through retrofitting, which is in green, I think is actually a, a more environmentally impactful thing for us to do, just for example. So those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking about when I'm looking at what our choices are. And so I wanna stick with, staff's recommendation in terms of the, the process. Thank you. Council Member Mahan. Thanks, Mayor. And yeah, I, I strongly agree with our with um, Council Members Cullen and, and Davis. I mean, I, I actually I strongly support staff's option A, the original proposal. And I'd go farther and say that I think it is critically important and, and really healthy as an organization that at least once a year, we come together, look at every idea we've had that is not currently on the roadmap being actively worked on and say, are these still our top priorities? Because we learn every year, we get impacted by events outside of our control, such as COVID, um, the world changes. And so every year, just as we're doing, I think we ought to look at everything that is not currently on the roadmap and being actively worked on and far down the road, things that are, you know, if something's already on the roadmap, 80% completed, then deprioritizing it would have, you know, would be quite a cost, but, or a waste. But in this case, what we're looking at on the screen, my understanding from staff, and let's clarify if, if I'm wrong about this, is that none of these are currently on the roadmap or, and or far down the track in any way. And so this is a reprioritization that ought to be done annually across all of those projects. So I just, I, I think it's actually very healthy as an organization, as hard as it is for us to look at everything. And I was also gonna pull out the plastic bag ban as well. I'm not sure with the new world we're in, the new information we have, that that would be very high on my list, even though, frankly, I see value in every single item on the list, but our job in a world of constrained resources with constantly evolving events and new information is to reprioritize and reaffirm the rank ordering of our priorities and what we think is most important. So anyway, I, I don't want to belabor it because the others have said it quite well, but that's at least where I stand. Thank you, Council Member Foley. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank the members of the public who came to speak on and advocate on behalf of the items important to them. I, I made notes of many of them, and I think some of them actually changed my priorities. Uh, and I appreciate my council colleagues and their discussions about the blue list, uh, green, yellow, and orange. 
and priorities there. I too have some items in the blue list that were green lighted or uh, made priorities last year that are still up there. So I know what I need to do in order to, vo to vote on those. Choosing these priorities is really difficult because there are so many really great ones, but I am mindful of staff's recommendation to create, to come up with two priorities. They are telling us that they do not have the bandwidth to add any more priorities and we need to be listening to them. The more priorities that we add to them makes, their, makes our organization inefficient, ineffective, and it makes all the current jobs that they do less uh, impactful. And those things are like Beautify San Jose and other areas that our community and our residents really care and find important. So we really need to listen to our staff that adding priorities while they are, I can I could vote for 20 of them easily without, without hesitation. Um, that we are looking at overextending staff given that we have limited resources from staff, they have limited time, we have COVID to still deal with, we're dealing with pandemic and the recovery. I really believe we need to continue on as recommended by Council Member Cohen, Council Member Davis and Council Member Mahan to vote on all of the priorities, come up with two, and then uh, look at the blue list uh, down the line after we prioritize the top two. But that, so, so that's my thinking. Um, with that, uh, I don't have anything else to add because the other council members have been much more eloquent than me. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Reynas. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I also want to um, extend my gratitude to all of the speakers who um, advocated uh, not just for my um, areas of priority, but for my colleagues as well, and they took the time out of their day. So thank you so much for uh, voicing um, your priorities today. So now back to the process. I know this is, um, I, I hear a couple of options that I'm open to, including yours, Mayor, um, and Council Member Esparza's. Uh, I think for me, um, you know, it's hard to it, it's hard to imagine that we're only going to uh, um, focus on two priorities when there's this pandemic and this recovery, and there's all of these issues that are so pressing. How is I, mean, I, I can't say one over the other is more important. Um, and so, it, so what I'm afraid of is that um, if we vote in the way, in the manner that the staff has indicated and, um, and that uh, say the, the blue, so we, we have the two priorities that come out, um, any, anything that gets uh, some points, especially in the blue, those will be up next. It sounds like that's the potential there. And I'm afraid of if, if, everybody, if all of these get the same number of, of uh, points, uh, everything being equal, which one will be focused first? So, you know, and, and that goes back to the question about how, how do we recover? Do we stand up businesses first or do we stand up um, uh, parks first or do we stand up internally our own? Do we stand up local hiring and, and small businesses? Um, how, do, how do we do this? And I think for me, it, it, we don't really have a criteria. We haven't all agreed on uh, the road to recovery is the following. And for me, that's what I'm, I'm uh, struggling with. And, uh, and I appreciate all my council colleagues who, who've um, you know, they expressed where they're coming from and their perspective. Um, it is, I agree with uh, Council Member Carrasco, this is absolutely frustrating. And I don't have seven years, I only have four under my belt, um, but it's four years of seeing some of these uh, priorities come back. And, and to me, um, it translates to these aren't priorities because if they were, they, would out, uh, they wouldn't be on this track and they would be on somebody else's work plan already in the queue, but they're not. So we are where we are. Um, and at this point, I'm going to just use my own criteria about how we recover, um, because that's how I'm making my decisions is based on 
um, for my community's needs and, and the perspective um, in terms of what I what I think we should rec how we should recover is how I'm going to choose these priorities. But I think what we should have done is we should have had a conversation about what is the criteria that we can all agree on um, on how San Jose recovers from all of this. Um, and I know that's taking this process one step back, but I think this is where I think um, there's difference of opinions from, from my colleagues um, and, and potentially the reason why we have different processes um, suggested. So in, in the end, I think it, um, I will support either uh, Council Member Esparza or, or um, Mayor, you also suggested a slightly different uh, process and I'm comfortable with either of those. Thank you, Councilmember Jimenez. Councilmember Jimenez. Oh, Councilmember Jimenez, I'm not sure if your your speaker may be off. Yeah, you're you're muted right now. Mayor, can you go to the next person? I apologize, I got tied up. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, we will. Um, so let me just offer, I, I, I'm willing to support either the staff approach or the approach uh, I articulated, as long as we end up with two priorities to get on this roadmap. What I'm not supportive of something that says, we're just gonna move a whole lot of priorities up and jam up the roadmap, um, because I go back to when I said, the laws of physics. I mean, there is a conservation of mass and energy in, uh, in this universe. And we simply don't get more work done by saying we're going to have a lot more priorities. Uh, in fact, the opposite happens because I think what we know happens is uh, that the work gets spread much thinner. Uh, and that means tasks don't get done, they get half done. And uh, we end up chasing our tail because we kept promising a lot of people that lots of priorities would get done when we simply don't have the bandwidth. Staff has taken the courageous, uh, made the courageous effort as they do each year to tell us honestly what they have capacity to do. Uh, we would be wise to listen to that. So I'll be supportive of an approach that either takes the staff approach or, or the approach I suggested as long as we end up with two more priorities on the roadmap and everything else has to wait. And, and the order in which it waits is certainly something we can discuss. Um, but I, I would in, encourage a motion um, by my colleagues to to choose a path. Um, Councilor Menez, are, are you in a yeah, place where you're able to able talk? Oh, uh, yeah, my own. Thank you. Okay, okay great. great. Is it, is is it, it your echo? echo? You're good, good. Yeah, there is an echo. Okay. I don't have two items on, so I, I don't know if it's me. I don't think it's me. But uh, anyhow, can, can you, you know, there's been a lot said. Um, I'm certainly supportive of moving forward with the current process, but I want to present maybe an idea that I have, uh, but I also, you know, I'm not sure if it's sort of already baked into some of what you've said. So can you re restate the possibilities on, on how we can potentially move forward? One is doing things as, as is, right? Just as it's planned. Yes. Uh, the, others is, uh, the other is, I think, uh, Try to recall exactly what Councilmember Esparza said. Essentially, um, moving forward a third item, something from the CP, right into into the the boat. Essentially, is that? Is I'll, that, I'll allow Councilmember Esparza to articulate that. I think. Is that what you're talking? Probably do some more. Perhaps we'll come back on that. Okay. Well, uh, can you can you quickly yeah. restate your your uh, your way? Your yeah, path? my suggestion was simply that um, we we pick among these uh, all these items the top two that make it under the roadmap, and then we explicitly say uh, for any uh, expansion of capacity, to whatever extent we're able to get done with what's on the roadmap, we would next go to the items in blue that have been prior previously identified by prior councils. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, well, let me, let me, then I, then I think my idea is probably a little, di uh, slightly different, out there, although I think there is some interaction as it relates to what you're proposing potentially. Um, I'll, I'll let uh, folks that are much smarter than I sort of work through this as I, as I put forward an idea that I have. And so uh, the blue columns as we're referring to them, right? It's the CP items. Um, 
I think there's certainly a lot of things on there that I'm supportive of. I appreciated all the comments from Councilmember Ferrasco and Perales and everyone else about, for example, the local hire or the wage stuff stuff. Um, but I also can say that there's some items on there that I, I, I'd be okay if they fell off. And so I'm wondering if uh, folks would be willing to, to sort of go down a path of a two-step process of sorts. One would be is that we take all the blue items and we have a vote. Essentially, we, again, like a first round, we have a vote and let's just say the top two items out of there come into the larger pot with everything else. And then we only pop out two items from there. And then we go through the regular process, only including two, let's just say two items from the CPs in the larger voting pot. Um, that would naturally already eliminate a, a good amount of the CPs that maybe aren't gonna have the votes anyway. And I'm curious if that's a way to have some of these items that folks are supportive of essentially be a little bit more competitive in the larger pool of items that we're gonna be moving forward. So and and that, would, that would be a variation on the staff proposal or on my proposal, just to be clear. Yeah, Councilman. you know, uh, again, just the interaction. I think that would, the only variation as it, as it relates to the staff proposal would simply be prioritizing, let's just say one or two items from the CP and then moving forward simply with the staff proposal as choosing two items. So essentially we're-, we're Okay, so then the other blue items would not get priority well, among the undone items and <laughs> the unprioritized items. Well, that's where the uh, interaction with the vote. you've stated sort of make, maybe comes in, right? Maybe those that don't make it to the top two CP items that go compete in the broader vote, maybe those sort of remain, as you said, right? Sort of on the sideline, ready to move up, assuming capacity uh, sort of opens up. Okay. I'm not sure if that- <laughs> So I, I, I think you've explained it. I think I understand it. Um, why don't we then entertain motions for how we proceed? Um, so, so I'll move forward with a motion, uh, having a two-step process that I just described, uh, essentially uh, having two items, us for first take a vote out of the CP items, having those top two items move into the larger pool of voting, and then at which point we follow the staff process in which two items pop out of that, if that's clear enough. I'm not... All right, so, so that's the motion from Councilman Jimenez. Is there a second on that item? Okay, let's move on and then we'll hear some more motions and people may come back to it, but it's out there on the table. Uh, Councilmember Carrasco? Um, I'll, I will move uh, your proposal, Mayor, which was, uh, okay, okay. Which was uh, to, uh, to to nominate two items from the green row. <laughs> we're, we're doing color coded to nominate the two items from the green, which is the new proposals and, uh, and continue by priority on the blue items. I'm sorry, sorry. Councilman Crosco, I should have clarified more. More clearly okay. what, what, I what I was suggesting. Okay. What I was suggesting is that we'd identify two items from all of the items we have listed uh, on the screen right now, that they may come from blue, they may come from yellow, they may come from green, whatever, uh, they would go under the roadmap. And then automatically, whatever didn't get chosen obviously is left and blue, the blue items, the CP items would take priority among all of the others when it comes to deciding what comes next, if we were able to get through the roadmap. The roadmap. Okay. But so how do we, how would we divvy up our five votes? Would that be the same, 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 same way. way throughout the whole? Yep. Unless, okay. unless you want to vary that. So I, so I really like your uh, proposal, except for that. So okay, here's okay. my variation. So everything except that. So, <laughs> so, so I, uh, my proposal is that we use our five uh, votes for the green, yellow, orange to exclude the blue. And those two would make it onto the roadmap. And then once we get through that, then we would get through, once we get through that, of course, we would uh, continue on with the blue in the order that they are prioritized. Okay, that, so, that, so- That's my motion. That, that, is there a second on that motion? 
I have a question. How is that different from the mayor's? I, I think it's the same thing, isn't it? I know he, his votes were divvied up among all of the colors. Oh. Yes, that's that's correct. I said that the two votes would go to any of the items. But just to be clear, Councilmember Carrasco, you understand that under your motion, those blue items would none of them would make the roadmap. They'd just be sitting in the in the bridesmaid line. I understand that, but at this point, they're not making them anyway. So at least this gives us an opportunity to get to them. So, okay, so okay. yeah, yeah, that's my question. So, for example, anti-displacement would stay down number eleven and possibly go down to number thirteen. Is that correct? Under Councilmember Carrasco's motion, that's my understanding. Okay, thanks. Okay, is there a second on Councilmember Carrasco's motion? We're going to keep trying this till we get one. <laughs> Councilmember Perales. Yeah, thank you. Um, and look, I, I'm, I was almost ready to try and, and second that, but I, it obviously does concern me as well that, um, you know, we're, we're not giving any opportunity to, to sort of decide on any of the items in blue. We're, we're essentially saying we're going to add two items to the work plan, and we're not going to be able to, to potentially add any of those items that are in blue. But hypothetically speaking, or realistically speaking, I guess, if we do move forward, with a motion like Councilmember Carrasco's um, to staff, we'd have our work plan, we'd have two new items added to the, the work plan for this coming year. And then next in line, say, would be the local hiring business apprentice program. Uh, and so through the course of the year, if there was capacity, um, work obviously on that would continue, maybe more slowly, but that as capacity built up, that would be next in line, correct, to be added into the work plan. Right. And that's a question, question for staff. Staff. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that's our understanding. Yep. I, I apologize. Uh, um, so, okay. So, yes. So that that would be your understanding. It would sit there, next in line, and then equally so all the other items. Um, in yeah. In in their in their order. Um, and um, they I I don't see all the items obviously you, you we have CP1 and then we don't have CP2 and 3 remind me are those because they're already on the work plan yeah those are things that are not showing up here are either completed or we believe can be completed within the remainder of the fiscal year without needing to be prioritized so the gaps uh, of CP2 and CP3 and I, I apologize I forget what they are so in this in this case we would go from from a local hiring business apprenticeship pro program and then the next in line would be parks operations and maintenance finance district as an example and I only mention that because Essentially, then CP11 is really maybe CP5 if it's in a ranking order. It's it's standing fifth in line. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So I, okay. So um. All right. I guess uh, I'm really torn between the, the staff recommendation and um and Councilmember Carrasco's um uh, motion, but I I will go ahead and second Councilmember Carrasco's motion. Okay. okay. Councilmember Carrasco's motion is on the. On the table if i could just ask everyone please, please mute, mute your device if you've got two devices on in your room thank you mayor um, can that motion get repeated please sure councilman crosco you want to give it a shot so <coughs> we have five votes we would use our five points between the green the yellow and the orange rows we wouldn't have to use our any any one of our points among the blue, which is the prior priorities. Those two priorities that we identify today would essentially leapfrog our prior priorities. They would make it onto the roadmap. When they're completed, then they would move on to our prior priorities, which is in the blue and they would move in order of the priorities that are there. And as Councilmember Perales stated, the numbers are not uh, actually correct on here because there's a lot, uh, there's several that are missing. So uh, the ranking is a little bit off. And the reason why I'm suggesting this process is because uh, if, uh, if we don't do this anyway, 
these uh, are, are uh, not ranked in the roadmap anyway. So at least this way, we're getting to them uh, by, by order of priority as they have been set forth beforehand. Okay, got it, thank you. Okay. And, and if, I, we I, only, if we only vote on one of those, then only one of those gets prioritized. Wait, say that again? I'm confused. If, if, we, if we only vote on one of the prior priorities, then only one of those actually makes it uh, to the top. And which one that one is, I, I, you know, we, we have no way of controlling that, right? Because it's up to the entire council. I mean, I, I, I know uh, which one I would like, but we don't, you know, because it's an entire council, you know, uh, it, it's not necessarily the one that some of us would like, but um, so at least this gives us an opportunity uh, to get to it eventually, hopefully. So then a clarification for staff. So that means that anti-displacement would be priority number five and the wage theft prevention policy would go to number nine. Is that correct? Yeah, so if, if I could, I just wanna kind of uh, respond a bit because I, I think so. If I'm understanding it correctly, uh, and I'll just take a little step back. So we have 40 items on, on the roadmap right now, and we're talking about a process of getting two more to go to 42. Councilmember Carrasco's motion is to, to pick those two from the green, yellow, and, and orange. And then the blue would end up being our, our first in line, kind of move up to the roadmap as soon as we can. And I think our commitment is, yes, they would go in priority order. And so council member Sparza, yes to your question. I just one caveat, I would say, I, I would anticipate as capacity becomes available, we would probably be able to make progress on some of these items in parallel. And there may be some work that comes out of sequence, depending on where that capacity comes from within the organization, because these items are are placed in different places. So it wouldn't surprise me if we made progress on local hiring at the same time as we made some progress on anti-displacement as capacity comes up. So I just, I know that complicates it a little bit, but I, I wanna, we have to be real too about how things actually play out for us. But uh, I, I hope that helps. So, so I'm just trying to understand the order and the process. So what you just outlined then, so for example, anti-displacement, which is a, a big issue, particularly given, you know, once the eviction moratorium um, expires, a whole bunch of bad things can happen, particularly to low-income communities. And so, so if I hear you correctly, we have prioritized Google, we've prioritized development, and that's going to move forward. But as that moves forward, we have the opportunity to have a subset to include portions of local hire, to include portions of wage theft, and to include portions of anti-displacement, which, which Jackie mentioned is still moving ahead. It's just not prioritized. Is that correct? Yes, I think that that's accurate. The way the council member Carrasco's motion is, is that we would, as a staff, be looking to the CP. Once we've identified two items from the green, yellow, and orange to move onto the work plan, as capacity is available, we would be looking to the blues, the CPs, to pull pieces or even whole items into the roadmap as, as we could. And so as they come back up, would we then, would that be explicitly pulled out throughout, throughout the year? Would we have then um, under the roadmap work, um, for example, uh, we prioritize Google, we prioritize major real estate development project, we prioritize development services transformation in the in the main roadmap, right? So then as that comes back to us as a council, would there be a subsection, kind of like in the memos, right, where that would be explicitly outlined here's the local hiring component to this work, or here's the um, anti-displacement uh, component to this work. We would see that on a regular basis as this work progresses. I, I believe so, Kip. I think we've, we've envisioned coming back, is it a quarterly basis? And, right. and certainly as Kip has already mentioned, 
we still have work to do to kind of fully define what's on the roadmap. We have 16 items on the roadmap that are COVID related. Um, and so I, I think the answer to your question is yes, we would be able to report out on our progress on, on that work and, and on the CP items that we've been able to pull forward, whether it's in pieces or in its entirety. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Point of clarification, um, Mayor, I can ask uh, Council Member Carrasco a follow up question. I, only for clarification, because we have a lot of folks in line. If it's for clarification, yes, it's sure. Clarification. Yeah, uh, Council yeah. Member Carrasco, you said that um, that as uh, it when when the two new priorities um, are finished, then we would move into the remaining unfinished. What you know, going through that uh, one through whatever number um, it ends at. Um, but uh, our city manager just said that uh, some of this work may be uh, prioritized based on um, availability of staff. So um, I guess I'm I, I, I'm trying to figure out whether you really meant for those two to be completely finished, like those two in the new proposed or green, orange and yeah. yellow may not be finished until like next year. So, you know, I, I, I can't define that, honestly, because that's going to be a, a staff call. Well, that's uh, in your, that's in your motion. Yeah. It, and so, 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 you know, part of this, this has been part of the, the issue, uh, city manager, is that I know that's, it's, it, it, sorry, mayor, I, I'm not going to get into this too much. Uh, and, and part of this is, is the issue with the blue. Some of that is is farther along than some of these items are farther along than other items, and so this is why I wanted the blue items to continue to move forward because we're already getting reports that are coming to different committees, and uh, and and to just not uh, have this on our roadmap it doesn't make any sense given that all of the work that's already been done. And I've heard the other council colleagues, uh, you know, express their their evaluation on a healthy organization. To me, you know, uh, when we've already done uh, all of the work that we have, and this is, you know, uh, leads towards the benefit of uh, uh, aiding and recovery of uh, poor neighborhoods, poor residents. Uh, this makes sense to continue the work forward. And so, for me, you know. Uh, we're going to be starting from scratch on the new priorities when some of these other uh, priorities that have been approved, like I said, six, seven years ago, uh, so much of the work has already been done. So, so give me an indication as to how, how I, 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 uh, I mold this, uh, this motion so that it makes sense for both staff and for my colleagues to vote on uh, in terms of the the workflow, so it, it needs to make sense for the organization, but it needs to make sense for us as council members when we give direction. Uh, the a lot of the workflow, a lot of the work has already been done. This is uh, this is uh, part of recovery post COVID. Uh, some of the work is already coming to our committees, and and the new policy priorities are going to be starting from scratch. So how do we? balance and juggle this so that we can we can actually have a motion that makes sense for everybody because I think that's a good question that that Sylvia's that councilmember Arenas is making it's it's a point of clarification and and, and councilmember Carrasco that as a seconder that's not how I understood your motion actually so uh, and I don't even think that would be uh it's not even realistic because staff is not going to stop work on on some of these things like they're going to come back with an update as they're already planned to come back to CED. So I think to answer, uh, at least the way I understood it as, as, as I seconded your motion, to answer Councilmember Marenas, um, I would say the answer is no, based on what you've asked, which is no, we're not going to just pause everything in the blue until the complete completion of whatever two new items we add in. Um, the two new items will be added into the work plan and these items in blue will continue work, just not at a 
not at a work plan priority level, but they're still on task to, 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 right, to come back to committee. And what the one caveat was that in their order that they're ranked right now, they would make their way potentially back up into the work plan as, as things completed, but it does, it, it's not, it's not as these two new items get completely completed. It's just as there is capacity overall. That's how I understood it. And so uh, I see Dave nodding. I'm, I'm happy to, to get understanding, but if that's comfortable, I think we can answer Councilmember Ennis with no, we're not, we're not waiting until these two new items get totally done. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate the dialogue and I just want to nod from the city manager because I think that the conversation is a worthwhile conversation. And this just, this just, uh, it, it uh, is demonstrative of the kind of fluidity that workloads are and how our organization, you know, it, you don't stop work because it happens to rain and you certainly don't stop work because then it happens to hail. And so uh, a pandemic hits and because we happen to be shut in, our workload doesn't stop. So we continue to work. We may pivot a little bit, but the workload continues. And again, uh, because there is a pandemic, we don't necessarily just shift priorities. They may they may take a back seat, but it doesn't mean that we erase those priorities that we had before. It becomes very fluid. So I think that this is a very um, a very uh, valuable uh, conversation. So uh, so uh, city manager. Yeah, thank you, council member. And so I think the way council member Perales. Uh, characterize it, I think, um, is a yes. I think that's a very a good characterization. You know, getting the two items onto the roadmap is is kind of the first order of work because I feel like I feel like the entire council fully appreciates our capacity strength. So that's not even an issue. I know you all all know that. Um, getting things onto the roadmap though is where we're going to really hold ourselves accountable. Um, that doesn't mean we won't make progress on other things, but that's really where the rubber needs to hit the road, and we are, we're committing to making progress, significant progress on the roadmap. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll go back then to uh, Councilmember Mahan. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Gosh, I don't know where to begin. I think um, maybe it's for Dave or, or Kip. I mean, I, I do think with when understanding what's actually up here on the board, it would be very helpful to know of the blue items, which ones are actually underway, how far along they are, and how many, how much more in terms of resources is required to complete them. Because that is a piece of information that at least I, I certainly don't have and might impact my opinion on this. My concern with, with the, the way this creative solution, I think it is a creative solution, but the way that I understand it is that it is essentially saying that as we vote to prioritize, nothing in blue can be put directly on the roadmaps. Or sort of the, I'm sorry? They're still talking about the process. Like, Hello? I think you're uh, not on mute. Thanks. Um, it seems to me what we're saying if we if we vote in favor of this proposal is that nothing in blue will be prioritized in the top two, which to me kind of defies logic because many of my colleagues are saying these are some of the most important things and past councils have seen them to be some of the most important things. And I would I would understand that, that, that makes sense to me. Um, it's also saying that once we pull two things out of the green, yellow, and orange, that none of those can be prioritized above anything in the blue some of which after, with COVID and the new information we have from the past years in which these have been prioritized um, may not be as important. In fact, I would say, as I look at some of the things in green, some of these are things we've looked at before or are already doing like Alfresco. Some of them are, I think, of higher priority likely because of COVID. So looking at the minimum wage, looking at universal preschool, I mean, these, these may be issues that actually are higher priority than some of the things in blue. So my proposal to keep it simple and to achieve the, the same goal um, and happy to offer a substitute motion or we can vote on the, the underlying motion here, but um, to me, it would be much more logical for us to vote on all of the projects, identify the top two, which may come out of the blue. They really might. It might, might be that the top two we wanna put on the roadmap right now are in the blue, not in the green, yellow, or orange and maybe give each council member 10 votes 
so that we can get more granularity or 10 points so we can get a more granular view of the global prioritization because any one of these, I don't know, I'll go back minimum wage, preschool, any of these might end up making it in front of plastic ban, plastic uh, bag ban at this point, given what we know. So I do think we, we want to be able to elevate the two most impactful right now, and they may come out of the blue, they may not. And I think we want to understand the global, the priority of all of these, green, yellow, orange, or blue, because just because the council said it was the top pri a high priority six years ago doesn't necessarily mean in this moment with COVID and everything else going on that it should be grandfathered in as higher priority than something that's that's been brought forward this year as green, yellow, or orange. I just I, I think if we really look at these, I think we've got to reprioritize based on the new information we have today. And I would argue that many in the blue should continue to be extremely high on the list and maybe be amongst the two that get elevated today to the roadmap. So I just, again, I'm truly struggling with the logic of this uh, approach. And I, I think it, it actually harms the, it harms both groups, both sets in its own way. It says that the blue can't go forward today as one of our top two. And it says that none of the new ideas can get anywhere on the top 12 because we already have 12 in the blue or whatever it is. So it harms both sets of ideas in, in a weird way. So I just, I'll lay that out there. I mean, my, my preferred approach would be to, to not adopt the underlying emotion, I'm sorry, motion, and instead go with the staff proposal, but give us all more points so that we can globally rank all of them and we can understand amongst all of these, what do we today think are the most important overall? So I'll, I'll leave it at that and see if anyone else wants to pick up on that. Uh, all right, Councilman Mahan, you're, you want to make a, a motion, you certainly can, um, but otherwise we'll keep moving. Let's go ahead and see if anyone else agrees all right. with what I'm saying. Okay, Councilman Cohen. Um, I, I think I agree with what you're saying. So, I mean, I, I would support your substitute motion. I like the idea of adding more votes too, because I think we do need to understand what the priorities are and how to rank them. I think, you know, it's clear that staff also has things that they're currently working on and wherever we move them around, that won't necessarily stop. And they, those things will get moved and completed at a, at a pace that you know, to me will continue regardless of, of the outcome here. But the outcome here gives us, can give staff a better idea as to when there's a space on the, on the main set of priorities and there will become a space when anything is done, any of the 40 plus the new two, what are the things that rise to level of priority for this council? And, and by having that, that ranking, I think it's, it's important. And I think not having the opportunity to revisit what's on the blue list, either by adding it to the priorities, or as you said, deprioritizing some of them below the other items is unfair to, to the process. Um, I, you know, at a minimum though, I would also like to say that whatever outcome we have, if the blue list is a priority, then whatever items on the other list get multiple votes today should also become new blue items at the bottom of that list. I mean, that would be my, you know, if, if it were for, you know, if we were going with Councilmember Carrasco's um, recommendation, I would, I would add that as a, as a potential friendly amendment to it because I think that we also want to say, which I, we don't, we don't want to leave this room having voted two items from the green and yellow and, and orange move up and then everything else just gets forgotten that we, that they got multiple votes of support. Today. We want to somehow document that. So I want to make sure that we're, you know, thoughtful about how we, what the outcome of this is. But I like the idea of having more votes. If we have more votes, we can probably move more of the blue things up on the list while we continue to add some green and yellow to the to that list as well. So I mean, I now I'll make the substitute motion because I still think it's important that the blue items have an opportunity to be on the main priority list. Um, and the substitute motion would be that we vote, up, vote from, from everything, that we have 10 votes so that we can continue to have items from potentially blue and the new categories stay as priorities, and that we use that ranking uh, as for, to fill in the roadmap as things get completed during the year, and that items that are all that are in blue that are current or in blue and orange, I think, that are currently being worked on are going to continue to be worked on by their departments. We're not telling anybody to stop work on important things that are being done as, as under the, in the course of their business. Okay. Is that a motion? A, yeah, that was a motion. motion is, is, right. it might is, is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor Jones. Um, 
I'm going to ask you to speak, and then I'm going to ask to close comment because we've got to we got to land this plane, <laughs> and we got to stop at one o'clock because I know we've all got a lot of commitments, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of time for individual advocacy. So I'd ask if if we could, after Vice Mayor Jones speaks, that we then call the question, uh, Vice Mayor. Well, I'll keep it short then, uh, Mayor. I, I was going to actually. Um recommend that we go back to staff's proposal, but I'm willing to accept the um, the um, substitute motion and just to move the process forward. Uh, but I would appreciate uh, uh, Kip or uh, Dave walking us through that process. So what, what our motion is gonna look like in terms of actual implementation. The, the substitute motion? For the substitute motion, yes. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite straightforward. Uh, essentially, you you would do what you were going to do, but instead of having five votes, you would have ten. We would still use the existing process that is in uh, outlined in detail in the memo to um, clarify what the priorities are. The top two would become on the roadmap, and we will commit to doing those. Everything else will stay on in the order of number of points as a prioritized backlog and would replace, if you will, um, would clarify the ordering of items on this. So you'd have three sections, two items that become policy and they're on the roadmap, a prioritized backlog that we would begin to work on or add to the list with, with priority on that order, and a third non-prioritized backlog that we would keep hold of to bring back for your consideration at future planning sessions to make sure we're looking at the whole kit and caboodle. So that's how we would understand the substitute motion and implement it. We would have no concerns with the implementation of it. The, in fact, the finer level of granularity will help us with the backlog because we'll have a broader sense of what you as a council want no, rather than just two or three items, what are the next 10 or 11 or 12, which is very useful for us to know. Okay, and so would, would that be through one round of voting and then you rank them or would we have because we'll do an initial round of voting and then those that only gets one points will reallocate those to you and allow you to revote and do some adjustments if there are ties so that we don't have just one Z's and two Z's. We'll okay. eventually re anything, everything on the backlog would have at least three points allocated to it in the end of the day. So there'll be a couple of iterative rounds that we'll do hopefully fairly quickly. Okay, that, that, that's the type of clarity I was looking for. Thank you, Kip. All right, um, we have a motion. Are there any questions for clarification on, we have right now, I think a substitute motion from council member Cohen. If that fails, we'll go to the motion of council member Carrasco. Can you restate the motion, please? Council member Cohen? Yeah, I'll try to restate it. Um, we'll take, we'll, we'll vote amongst all items um, on all, in this page, but with more votes, 10 votes each. Um, to put on to one, you know, no more than one vote per item from any one council member. And then the top two will move on to the roadmap and the rest will be prioritized by the number of votes they receive in, as backup so that as room occurs on the roadmap during the year, those items move are moved on to the roadmap. Um, with the uh, caveat that nothing else that's currently being done on any of these items is Know, is meant to be stopped if, if it's if action is, is occurring. Okay. Everybody understand question. the motion? Uh, yeah. Clarifying question. Uh, Councilman Rice. Um, so does that still mean we, we have one vote only for one item, right? We can only vote and give one point to each item. Yeah, because that, that way we'll get a better feel for you know, everybody has, should be able to pick their top 10 priorities. Right? And then okay, we'll thank you. Top 10. Okay. okay, any other any questions, questions about, about the motion? Mayor, motion? we're voting first on mine? No, no. we're voting, we're voting on, on the, the, the super motion, motion first, first which, which is Councilman Cohen. Okay, so I just wanted to say, um, uh, I, I like this, uh, I, I mean, I like my motion. <laughs> <laughs> we always like our, like our own motions. motions. Yeah, of course we do. And I and I there's you know I've been accused of being a little competitive. <laughs> uh, uh, but but I but I I kudos to Council Member Cohen <clears throat> for pulling uh, you know a little bit of, a little bit of a nice from everybody's uh, ideas 
and uh, and synthesizing it. So uh, I'm going to support uh, Council Member Cohen because I think it it allows us to first of all it gives us more votes. I like that, but it allows us to to uh, you know really um, uh, be able to look at our priorities, pull from them, uh, and spread the wealth. So I'll, I'll be supporting. Just to credit Council Member Mayhem for the adding the number of votes is his idea. I don't want. Oh, thank, thank you, Council Member Vivian. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any, any questions about the motion? Without any. Okay. Let's vote then on the motion from Council Member Cohen. Menes. Yes. 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 Rowles. Aye. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Crosco. Aye. Davis. Aye. Esparza. Yes. Arenas. Yes. Bully. Aye. Mahan. Aye. Jones. Aye. Ricardo. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, that was easy. We now have 19 minutes left. Um, let me suggest something. We've all been living with these issues and these priorities for several weeks. Uh, I would encourage and support a motion to simply cut off debate and allow us to vote because I, I really doubt there's anything any of us can say that will persuade any of us because Move I know we've vote. studied all these. Okay, there is a motion. Second. <laughs> a second. Okay, I think we need to vote on that, is that right, Nora? Um, yeah, I think once yes. the we need to vote on that. Yeah, okay. So let's vote on the motion to cut off debate. Menes? Yes. Perales? Aye. Cohen? Aye. Cross Cross? Aye. Davis? Davis? Aye. Aye. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Bully? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Ricardo? Aye. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to vote now. Tony? Uh, actually, it, it won't be Tony. You've got a link that you've been sent. Okay. And uh, what you do is it says five is your limit. Now 10 is your limit. It will try to stop you. Don't ignore it. Um, what we need to do is fill that out. Uh, I'm going to keep this up as reference because these are now the new numbers. It doesn't have the merged ones in it. But e e if you vote for either or any of the merged ones, we will clean that up as we go. And what I would recommend is we'll probably need about five minutes um, after you submitting that for us to clean it up, put it into a single spreadsheet and be able to display it. So if you could go ahead and uh, my recommendation Kim, would be- I don't have the link. Um, we'll get that right to you, council member. Are you saying it's been sent to us by email, Kip? Correct. Or city email? Yeah, your staff, your staff, uh, chief of staff should have the link uh, to the uh, sheet. If you don't have it, we will make sure that you do right away. I hear that Council Member Esparza did not have it, and I don't know if nor do I. Mayor Licardo has yeah. it. So, um, Mike uh, will forward that to you immediately. My apologies. You can just re forward to me as well. Please. Okay, why don't we? I will make sure we forward it to all council members and the mayor that they get it directly. My apologies. Thanks. That, that's gone up. Uh, well, so we'll do that. And what I would suggest is why don't we take a uh, break um, and then come back in either, uh, let's make it seven or 10 minutes because we're going to need the time to look at that. And then we'll be able to tabulate if that works for All you. All right. We'll be back at 1251. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right.
Kip, uh, what do you think? I think we're pretty close. Um, and uh, we're going to need more. Obviously, we're not going to make it by one. Um, so yeah. if, if one is a hard stop, then I would suggest perhaps we display the initial results and then uh, either reconvene at a regular council meeting. We could do it as soon as tomorrow if that was desired. Well, there, there isn't any additional council input needed, is there? If we've According to the process that Councilmember Cohen laid out, we're simply ranking the top priorities and some of the top two make it on the. Board yes, plan. Is but that right. My my, rec uh, my recollection. I'd like of to the, see what they are. Yes, my recollection. Sure. My recollection of the motion, though, was that it would be following the process that we had recommended, which means we would take away uh, any points that just had one and allow those to be reallocated. But I'm open either way. But that was my understanding. So there's a couple of a couple of iterations. Oh, okay. And in the case of a tie, we've got a process we need to go through. Okay. But we might be able to do that very quickly depending on what the results are. Yeah, I'm guessing if we have a long tail on these items, it's really not going to matter what happens with the items with one or two votes, right? Right. If there's a clear one and two and there's a long tail, that's no problem. Okay. And if uh, Council Member Carrasco, you can just let us know when you've emailed that so that I make sure that we've got it. Could I just uh, throw out a suggestion here? We've got a council meeting tomorrow. I know it'll be a long council meeting, but 
Uh, this final step, if there is an additional step needed, perhaps we could continue it to tomorrow for the council meeting uh, sometime after the consent agenda. Um, would the council be agreeable to doing so? Yes, absolutely. I, I have a question to how long it would take for us to, how, how long, how many more minutes would it take if, to tally it, get the result? We should be able to present the results shortly. We're waiting on uh, Council Mer uh, Member Carrasco's email and then uh, Council Member Jimenez. I think you actually have one more point to allocate if you would like to. Yep, did you did you get my I So I I'm certainly fine I'm if we need more time to present the results. I would just ask that Council Action, uh, any further Council Action would wait until we have the whole Council together. I'm going to have to leave it one uh, for some, some other items. Uh, I know others may as well. And so I'm certainly fine if people want to hang around for the presentation. I would just ask that council action wait until tomorrow. <clears throat> Camp, is there any action? It's just the results, right? Well, we, we need your we need you to uh, accept the results and to direct us to add the two to the roadmap to be to be clear. So um, okay. there is an action. And uh, Council Member Carrasco, I, I don't think I've, I've received yours. So I, so I checked the box. What do I need to do after that? Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, that that should be good enough. Um, I'm, but by checking in with Eric now to make sure that he's got yours um, you from yeah, the box. You check. Yep, we'll do. So to the mayor's point, the actual action would happen tomorrow at one thirty, one thirty, or soon after. Right? Correct. I mean, I, I'm yeah, okay with that, suggestion. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Do we do we need a motion? Yeah. We don't need a motion, right? Or do we? Um, no, I think we could probably just uh, do defer the remainder of the item uh, as soon as the, the meeting is uh, adjourned, whenever uh, Vice Mayor Jones decides that is. If Vice Mayor Jones, are you able to hang around for a few minutes? I should have asked. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council Member Carrasco, we do have your uh, points. They are being uh, uh, put together with the rest and we'll be ready to display them shortly. And then uh, we, can, we can display them and then move forward with the actual decision at tomorrow's council meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for uh, your hard work, Kip, and to the entire team. Uh, and thank you, Vice Mayor, for leading us to the finish line. <laughs>
Okay, it looks like we're ready. So um, we'll display that up on the screen for everybody to look at. And I think since it, since uh, Council Member Esparza, since you uh, we had user interface issues for you, I want to make sure that we got your recorded pieces right. What we'll do right now is for clarity's sake, we're, we're going to go ahead and remove all of the ones that got zero votes. And so those are deprioritized and you'll be able to see it a little more clearly. So we want to keep those up for at least a second. And now we'll remove all of the ones with uh, zero points votes on it. And so you can see all of these. So what you see on the screen here is you see the overall points total um, under column D. And what it looks like is we have two clear priorities that rise to the top. It looks like the number one vote getter is the combination MP 10 and MP 20, which is on line 24. If you could highlight the line, please. Yeah, which is encampment management strategy and unhoused and resi uh, residential safe relocation gets 10 points. Um, and then the number two vote getter is the merged combination of MP6, MP8, and MP3, Build Back Better, Recovery Task Force D3, Alfresco Forever, which got nine points. So um, not for action today, but those two would be added to the roadmap. And then the rest of the items would remain as prioritized by the number of points that were allocated. So just to be clear, the next two items which are tied would be NP5 boost San Jose uh, retail sector and uh, in CP16 upda update council's wage theft prevention policy and then we would go to the ones which have six points, which are one, two, three, four, five of them. So again, we'll bring this back for council uh, action tomorrow, but this gives us our two items on the roadmap and the prioritized backlog. So uh, we did have some concluding slides um, talking about budget alignment and operationalization, but in the interest of time, we will conclude the presentation here. Uh, and defer any further conversation on operationalizing in the budget until tomorrow, if desired. Um, hey, if, um, actually, Council Member Arenas, uh, you have your hand raised. Did you have a question or a comment? Oh, thank you, Vice Mayor. No, that was from earlier. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Kip. That's it. Uh, 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 City Manager Dave Sykes, is there anything that you want to add in conclusion? No, thank you, Kip. That, that's it for us, Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you. And uh, Tony, uh, I see two hands up from the public. Uh, public comments are, are closed, right? So we're not taking any additional public comments. I, I think Vice Mayor, we'd already taken public comment if I understood the process correctly. All right, just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. So um, meeting is adjourned. I'll see everybody until, tomorrow. Council member or vice mayor until tomorrow afternoon at 1.30. It's Nora. Oh, Nora. Thank you. All right. Means adjourned.